What's happening, guys? It's Adam here. Just before we go into this week's episode, I want to let you know that we do an extra episode of this shit every single week exclusively on Patreon. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's basically a way for you to financially support this podcast while getting a few rewards for yourself. Now, you can sign up for three quid a month, five quid a month, or ten quid a month. The more money you give us, the more benefits you get. But even the people who only sign up for three quid a month, which is what, less than the price of a fancy coffee, you get an extra episode every single week, which is about an hour and a half long, uh, where it's just me and Dan most of the time. You also get early access to these public episodes with the guests you get discounts on merch discounts on live shows early access to tickets for stuff like that and also you get access to every single patreon episode we've already done as soon as you sign up there's a shitload of stuff there it's a massive bag catalog we've been doing this for months now sign up today at patreon.com slash have a weird pod the link is in the description subscribe to this channel while you're there give us a little like on the video and let's get to the podcast are you but you sure you're ready? I'm ready. Fuck I was born ready. Born ready. Fucking knack at me. Oh, yeah? Got a puppy, haven't I? Right. Got a little puppy. Little puppy bags. I think you're talking to the wrong cunt here, mate. You're right. talking to a parent, and you've never given me any sympathy about being tired. Yeah, and now he's worse than a baby. And now you're here with your puppy chat going, Oh, Dad, I feel very tired. Yeah, but a puppy's worse than a baby, I've isn't got it? got a puppy who woke me up once, scratching. No. Like, she was howling, like, at the moon, like a fucking wolf. Right. Everyone warned me beagles, a little cunt, and the dead mouthy, and I was like, mine won't be. Fucking is. Yeah. This is where the Adam Rowe, don't take advice uh, advice off no one fucking school of <laughs> school of hard knocks comes. <laughs> Bullshit! Mine's going to be so... <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's lovely, little Lola. Yeah? Little Lola. I was going to call her Kobe, but then I fell in love with a girl. And I needed a name, and Lola just come to me. Little Lemon Lola. Lovely name. Yeah. Cute fucking dog. And my cute daughter needs a sit down with that dog. Okay. It's like I've been watching a lot of Sopranos recently. When shit goes down, they have a sit down. My daughter is is keen on the idea of touching your dog. So. She can meet her. Oh, my Social God. Distance. I'm not just. What? <laughs> You can't socially distance puppies and toddlers. Oh, she's not really a toddler. Yeah. She's fucking nearly four. She'll love it as well. She's dead oh. like, like with Carl come and uh, selected and then picked it, picked the dog up with me and then come to mine, help me uh, as always, as he always does, help me tidy the house up, get the ready for the dog, cleaned out the cupboard under the stairs. Like a good wife does. The little, the little dog bedroom. Um, and then you just held hands and a little tear. <laughs> <laughs> Look at what we've brought into the world for two yeah. and a half grand. Uh, no, a lot cheaper. Do you get a discount? Yeah. NUS? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you use your student discount? Yeah. They, what, did you I get a group on? The... You didn't get a group on dog. No, I walked in to the, uh, the the place where you get the dogs. Right. Which we won't name. <laughs> okay. And uh, they just went, fucking hell, it's Rowie Bags. No, yeah. come on. You gotta give them fucking... Come on. No, they went fucking Rowie Bags from the fucking no. nationwide advert. They no. gave them a fucking free dog. <laughs> oh, so that's how they run their business. <laughs> Oh, that lad's been on telly. He's got telly money. Give him a discount. <laughs> no, it was just a cheaper dog. I didn't get like a cavapoo. I got a beagle. Yeah, you and got one on offer. Well, they're, they're little cunts, so that they, they can't charge as much for them. God, he went in the discount bin, the one that was howling. Like, <laughs> should be sound. 40% off. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> yeah, a lot cheaper, and it's a good job, really, because, uh, yeah, I, didn't, I couldn't afford the other one. Right, you made a saving. Yeah, made a saving. She's got <laughs> on the credit card. It's the most ridiculous. I don't know anyone who's bought a dog. I had one mate that bought a fancy car. It was beautiful and it was like a bell end. Yeah. But I don't know anyone who's bought a dog. You're I don't, like, like, I'm not comfortable with the fact that they did it, to be honest with you. I'd rather rescue, but it's done now. Right. And I, like, you know, she, she can't be going anywhere. <laughs> that was an amazing moment where Adam wrestled with his morals, like, ah, I'm not comfortable with it. I'd have rather rescued. I mean, I fucking didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I turned up. Well, there wasn't any to rescue. I know we've been through this. You don't have to apologise. Um, no, but uh, I you've, feel like do, I you've do. fallen in love with the dog, and she I've seen me. the pics. She picked me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We were there. I was looking at a King Charles Cavalier, and I was like, maybe I'll get that. And then in the corner, there was just a little beagle looking at me, and I went over, and she was just biting me and licking me, and she was like, I want to come. There was other oh. dogs trying to get to me, and she was like, Get out the way! Fuck off! Oh my hey! god! Hey! Hey! She's a psycho. This is, everyone, this is my dad. Right, great. <laughs> now you made that connection. That's what you need, I imagine. Yeah, and then she she come home in the car in Carl's arms. 
And then, uh, yeah. You two. Yeah. You two guys. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I hope she's all right today because obviously she's... Are you a little bit worried about her? Yeah, it's the fir- first time away from her. I've left, I've, you know, I've cracked the window. As in, as in I've you... got a big car. Hey. <laughs> Come on. But you do know, all, all banter aside, does it feel... Is it nice? She's great. I can't, I'm saying all banter aside, that's such a bullshit caveat because I'm not going to be like, oh, I'll be dead genuine now. But do you feel, is it... She's lovely. She's right. great. And she fucking stinks when she farts. Like worse than me, you know, like it's face so you do. much like having a kid. Yeah, it really, really is. But like harder because they can't. They find it more difficult to tell you what they want because it's not the same species. Yeah, you know, a kid can. Yeah, be- like babies can say, uh, "I'm dead hungry." <laughs> You're right. It's just totally no, but you it's totally different. No, but like species. Yeah, it's not the same species. Is that the right term? Yeah, isn't a species- dog and a human? No, no, they're not the same thing. I thought species was inside the type of animal like a species of spider or no oh. well you're talking to the ministry of idiots here so <laughs> i don't know what you expect like actually carl let me break down species breed race yeah i uh, th- type i thought she was gonna be a bit nervous but the second we got her home oh yeah she loved it yeah. she, she was just fucking great she had a shit on the carpet yeah i haven't got a carpet but i've got a, a rug, rug. She a rug. On that. Yeah. it's again it's quite similar to, to yeah. yeah or harder but much more difficult <laughs> yeah yeah, I just yeah. like don't be expecting any. I'd have to walk my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Can't walk her for a couple of weeks. Actually, she needs to get her fucking stabs. Oh, she needs to get a COVID vaccination. Yeah. Wow, that's how expensive this dog is. It's before yeah. my fucking mother-in-law in the line of vaccinations. Yeah. She, well, she needs to get vaccinated so she can go for a little walk. And what's what's the level of joking we can do about the dog? You know, because we are pretty vile about each other's uh, parents, grandmas. But I get this feeling that we're not joking about the dog. What? Are you going to joke about fucking me, dog? Someone needs to. But is that really my role in this whole thing? <laughs> like, let's track back through the 102 episodes. It's never me, like, leaning into that shit. But so, I just, I bet, I bet. What, what sort of jokes do you want I to wouldn't make? do it. I'm just what saying. What jokes do you want to make about me, dog? No, I see. It's getting like, right. No, I will be sound about it. <laughs> but let's just, there's some rules. <laughs> yeah, your mum and your nan, fuck that. We make jokes about that, but little oh, fucking, she's cute, beautiful. No, yeah, well, no, I just want to know what what sort of jokes no, you want to make. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm yeah. not going to do any You want to finger joke. me, dog? <laughs> is that, what, like you, is that what you think I meant? Yeah. No, uh, I, that's not the oh. kind of jab she needs. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'll just, you know, I'm very respectful of you as a new parent. Yeah. As both of you as new parents, you know, because yeah. Carl Uncle is a big Carl? responsibility. Uncle Carl, yeah. Uncle Trying Carl. to convince his ma to get one. Yeah. And have two little beagles. Lola. What are you going to call her? Showgirl. <laughs> her name was Lola. And this is Showgirl. Are you going to get a two grand beagle just to do a bit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't really afford it, but oh, it's just such a good joke. Um, now, nah, I want to call either Jeff or Bruce. Yeah. Bruce is a good one. Bruce is a great name for it. After dog. your favourite action hero. Fiona Bruce. <laughs> Finn, have you got any pets? Have you ever had pets? Have you? From, <laughs> are you from a pet family? It's a bit of a sensitive subject, Dan. But we'll we'll what? do it. You the know, cat. You know why? He's, he's just being fucked off, ain't he, by his missus because oh, she bought a cat. Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. I forgot that was a... Uh... It's okay. My family also have a cat that I'm allergic to. So it's just... Oh. Are you welcome anywhere? <laughs> no, not really. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Finn. Yeah, I went off to uni and they straight away bought a cat and was like, don't come back. <laughs> that's that's not your room anymore, no, Finn. That is a, she that's the cat's in my room. room when I'm not there. Mate, can we talk about... My neighbours have got two dogs. They are large, barky dogs. We saw them out on a walk last week. We went for a walk, and just by chance, Chester's not massive, they were parking up, and and Laura's face was like, oh, God, because they're so barky and mental at home. And I could see Laura think, this isn't going to be safe walking around the country park in Chester. And then they got out, and they were absolutely sound because they were away from their house. They were sound. But fuck me at home. They are the loudest, stupidest, barky dogs. And they sleep in the bedroom next to my room. So just in the middle of the night for no fucking reason. Is it a bark or a yap? No, it's like they are huge dogs. 
I just don't like a yap. It's so the both both of them they set each other off. So it's not like a. It's like a. <laughs> oh, it's literally. <laughs> it's the level of barking <laughs> I'd expect from if a dog. If you could see a dog's workings, like I would reasonably allow that much barking. Barking. If a guy came in with like an axe <laughs> and a fucking hockey mask, that <laughs> like definite murder is about to happen, and it's just every night about three thirty four in the morning. I think. I'm like, gonna... is it me being a dick to get annoyed about that? Well, a, why are they barking like that? What's going on? And could you fucking move them? Move them over this to is the why other side it's of the house. Harder to have dogs than children. Because you're like, why are they barking like that? <laughs> Eventually, when a child's older, you can figure it out. You'd move You'll them, though, wouldn't you? To You'd where? move them to a room that isn't adjoining <laughs> the house next door. It, oh, you're in a semi-detached, aren't you? Yeah. Right. Just go, get them on that side of the fucking yeah. house. It would depend, really, wouldn't it, on how much your neighbours like you? Well, it seems sound, as we're walking around the park, like, oh, this isn't such a coincidence, isn't it nice? But apparently, no, fuck them. Mm. Every morning, 4am. Pissing me off. Yeah. yeah, man. What's going on at 4 a.m.? They're like, <laughs> every night. Just fucking do my head. Have you ever thought of just like trying to ignore it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll give that a try. That's what I do. <laughs> what I'm doing when I'm asleep, I should just, as just before it wakes me up, and I've got I've got industrial fucking earplugs in. I should think, ah, Dan, just ignore this and stay asleep. <laughs> you fucking rat. Oh, what time does Lola start barking? Do you, I got do you, know, do you know we've done 150 episodes of this shit, and there's so many times I've said something inappropriate to you, and it's like water up a duck's back. And when I said that, then you looked at me like you're the biggest fucking cunt on the face of this earth. Oh, just ignore it. Things then. fucking with your sleep, though. Oh. Yeah, I haven't had a good sleep. I really haven't. Um, and that's going to be a while, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It's like, um, how long's what's the time scale on dogs and just chilling out and not being? I think balanced? it's like three or four days. I hope so. Anyway, you reckon? <laughs> oh, you'd be sorted by Tuesday. Mm, it's probably about three or four months. Getting? Uh, no, it's not four months. It better not be four months. <laughs> Can I just say? It's a baby. Tomorrow we record our second in studio lockdown lock in socially distanced. You know. And I... It will be available exclusively on Patreon this Friday. Patreon.com slash have a word part. If you're not already signed up, go and do that now. It's going to be me, Danny, and Johnny Bongo. And last time we did it, it was just me, Adam, and Carl. And it was the most fun I had in the second half of 2020. Yeah. Uh, which d isn't beating much, is it? Because it was a bit of a dog shit year. But uh, I'm really, A, nervous because Johnny Bongo's coming in and... You know when, like, you're going on a stag do and then someone's got a mate and they're like, yeah, 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 Nathan's a fucking psycho. <laughs> it, it's got me, like, a little bit nervous because I want to not be horrifically ill, which I know is probably going to happen, but I also know I'm the bellend who will be like, <laughs> all right then. So I'm, I'm a little nervy, but how is your hangover going to go with a puppy that, oh, mate, that's made me, like, ooh, for you. Yeah, I, look, I, I've just got to deal with it, haven't I? And um, maybe maybe I'll ask uh, someone from my support to bubble to come and help. To, to that big that bubble, mm -hmm. yeah, I love that bubble. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Email in if you want to be in the bubble and, and look after the dog. Yeah, yeah. Did yeah. you see something <laughs> happened yesterday that made me think about the podcast and my future health? Oh. Uh, Nigel Ung. Nigel Ung. Nigel Ung, who does Uncle Roger. Uncle Roger. Hello, niece he and nephew. It's Uncle Roger. Now, we can do that voice because it's a copying a Malaysian guy doing that voice. So it's fine, isn't it? Yeah. But Nigel Ung. It's also a really good mimic of it, actually. I'm actually really good at it. Yeah. Yeah. Can't be racist if you nail it. Fact. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, that's one of the rules. Hello, niece and nephew. It's Uncle Roger. <laughs> he, uh, he did a video, put it on the old fucking YouTube. Yeah. Got three million followers or whatever. He's just absolutely smashing it. And it had in it um, a little bit of slagging off of China. Yeah. Had a guy on uh, that's on, on like China's shit list. I think he's called Michael Chen. 
who has talked about the Mickey Muslims yeah. and also about Tiananmen. Uyghur Muslims. Uyghur. 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 Uyghur Muslims. Yeah. Muslims. Uyghur Muslims. It's like Uyghur Muslims, but with a yeah. G. Uyghur. Muslims. Uyghur Muslims. Okay, I've got it. Yeah. I'm saying it. Oh, I've got it. <laughs> Muslims. Yeah. And uh, China complained and <laughs> got in, uh, I don't know if they went via YouTube or went straight to straight to Nigel Ng's uh, management, but Nigel Ng has been on Weibo to apologize for any offense caused. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> like, China is so fucking picky. Like, oh, no, that's out of order. Can't have comedians taking the piss out of China. And they've gotten his ear enough and he shit it enough and China are fucking horrible enough. Fuck China! Yes, Adam! <laughs> yes! He's I had love... no sleep. He's got a puppy, but he's still not bowing down to China. I love China, me. Why do you like China? Boss, Shut Kadam. up, Carl, you fucking rat. I had Chinese last night. Mate, I, I, I literally just thought of us. Could you imagine if I get poisoned by the Chinese government? Are we ever going on Weibo and doing an apology? No, we're fucking calling not. Calling them horrible cunts. What's Weibo? Stop fucking killing the muzzies and we won't have a go at you. It's... <laughs> Simple. That, that was like that. The way you worded that, it was like the EDL had added like change of heart. <laughs> right, fucking no bed. Right, immigrants are all right. The sound. Do you know what I mean? Fucking grow up. Yeah. Like you know what I mean. Stop being nasty. They're just trying to go about the day. I would love to get to the amount of Patreon subscribers it takes to apologise to a country. I mean, it's not a problem you've got at 10,000 subs. Did, when you say China complained, do you mean the communist Chinese party? Who do you, who's the other option? Is China. Like the whole population. I don't think he got 1.7 billion emails. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. The whole of China turned into a car and went, this is out of order. <laughs> I'm going to get on the internet. If only I could fucking send an email out of this shit old country. Yeah, the internet's bad there, isn't it? In China. <laughs> no. 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 No, but like a lot of it is. It's monitored. I said that in uh, when I went to Dubai. There's two Chinese lads in the audience at the gig. And I, <coughs> I was like, where are you from? And they're in uh, China. And I went, oh, have you just come to use the internet? And they died laughing. And everyone else was like, <laughs> nope. <laughs> have you seen how they monitored it in North Korea? What do you do? Like, if you're lucky enough to have a laptop, which is quite rare, the <laughs> laptop randomly takes screenshots throughout the month. <laughs> and at the end of the month, the police come and... It's a file that you can't access. And the police come oh and look at the file. Oh, my God. Oh, my Why God. Why don't they just order laptops that don't do that? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's just, it's just, North it's, Korean curries. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Goss. You're going to... <laughs> Going to North Korea and Argos, like, lad, <laughs> I don't want one of them noncy ones that watches you. Just give us a normal one. Give us a Dell. Come on. Imagine sitting there with the police, though, and you've been watching porn, and they see the screenshots of it. Oh, of course. There'd be so many What does it take? Does it take 10 a day, 10 pics a day or something, just to ran randomly take pics? It takes, you don't know when it's taking it. Oh. And it goes into a file you can't access. Oh, what would yours be? Mine would be Gmail... Facebook, Patreon, porn, Patreon, porn. That's what happens when we get more subs out of a wank. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, it's gone up by 10. Um, I don't know. Horrific. Own. Yeah, be audible. Yeah. Um, Do you know when I was in? I'm quite comfortable with my, my search history. Yeah. Good input. Thank you for that. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you want to lie down? Do you want to have a nap? Adam, are you there? What the fuck? Oh, I think it's fine. Here's other normal statements from Adam Rowe. Yeah. I went to Bahrain and they are a bit fiddly about the internet over there, aren't they? You can't look at port. You can't just go on. A are you all right with this juice? You so seem confused <laughs> by the top and the flavor. Like I've, I've looked over three times. You're like, do you know what it is? <laughs> it's true fruit, sir. You know what it is? Spin there. So see the way the label lines up? Right. If I close it without the label lining up, it's oh. doing me head in. Oh, that's fair enough. So like when it's like that. Oh no, that doesn't look right. <laughs> you see? Oh yeah. I thought you were being a bellend, but you're absolutely right. 
Yeah. That's the wrong way. Oh, God. The worst Hang game on. show yeah. ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, C D. <laughs> Our next contestant is still washing her hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. Um. So China. <laughs> if you got a bit of OCD, is that what's happening there? You've, a little bit. Uh, I think we've we've d- diagnosed ADD enough, and then we've had emails of going people. Yeah, no, Adam's definitely got a bit of it. But have you got OCD? A little bit. Uh, a little bit. But like, if you looked at my house, you would never know. <laughs> You've not got the OCD that helps keep everything clean and tidy. No, I just need labels to be like that. And you know what I mean? It's just a, you'd like a little bit of symmetry, a little bit of order. Yeah. Like, but, but you're not like... There's a specific order my apps are in on my phone screen. Oh, there you go. Like, when we were in here, I had to make sure all these things were perfectly lined up with each other. Like, on our for anyone on the audio, we're talking about the, the studio backdrop. Yeah, sometimes we forget how long... Uh, it's been a while. Like this shelf is exactly the distance from that wall as this is from that wall. Uh, you know, like, the symmetry of the, the soundproofing. But that's just good... I don't know. That's just good visuals, isn't it? Yeah. It's not OCD. People people use like, OCD incorrectly. I'm sure yeah. it's quite offensive. If you've been diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder, and you're a fucking weird. And you're and you're oh <laughs> now he's awake. He's back. <laughs> he's back. His fucking blueberry juice just really kicked in. If you've got that and you can't leave the house because you have to check the lock forty times in a row, yeah. And then you've got to wash your hands to the point where it's fucking hurting, yeah. I'm sure when people are like, oh, God, I am a nightmare, me. I have to have all the coat hangers facing the right way. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know how I survive my OCD. You're just being a pernickety cunt, aren't you? I, I went to school with a lad who's got proper OCD. Like, goes down like 30, 40 times throughout the night to check the ovens off and stuff, even though he hasn't used it for years. Yeah. Yeah. That is an actual ADD. You think it's just like, oh, you can't concentrate on anything. But actually, we were reading up of it because a friend of ours, I think, has got ADD. And it's just the... Is it me? No. <laughs> I think you do have a bit. Yeah. Yeah. But a performative, like, I'm not as bad as you make me out to be. I think you're also a bit bored of me. I think there's an <laughs> element of that. I think that we've talked to each other so much, you're like, oh, God, this cunt's talking, which is sort of the point of the pod. But uh, <laughs> it's like the inability to just... This is where I don't think you've got ADD. It's people with an inability to just do anything because they get dwarfed by all the options. So, you know, like, you've got to tidy your house, but you've also got to, uh, like, clean up, but then you've got to do that thing on the email, and then really you should go and collect that parcel. And if people with ADD suffer to be like, uh, the way they suffer is like, oh, well, I, I can't, I don't know which one to sort of start. Oh, I've got that. I just go asleep. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. If I've got four things to do and they're all equally important, none of them are getting done. I'll just scroll on my phone. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've defo got whatever that is. procrastination, though, isn't it, really? But it's... Procrastinating is is when people it's are like just chronic like... chronic procrastination. Oh, yeah, I will get to it and I'll do that other thing. But this is more like you're, you're overawed by it. You're like, you cannot get it going because you're like, oh, but if I start that thing, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be able to start that thing. And then, oh, for fuck's sake. And it's just like being bewildered by it. Not just being like, oh, I can't be arsed. Like you're bewildered by all the things you need to do. Like I've, I, I've seen that up close and it's hard to watch. Yeah, yeah, I, I've got that. Do you think if I tell HMRC that I've got that, then I just won't have to do my tax return because it's a disablement? <laughs> just like, just j- draw a smiley face in crayons like... A disablement? Disability. A disability. <laughs> I think you might get a discount on your tax if you just use the word disablement. <laughs> Hello, my name is Adam. This is my tax return. I earned some money, but I have a disablement. Here is a boat. It's a picture of a boat on the sea. Like I got, not done this that. is my dog. <laughs> Her name is Lola. But do you, not, do you not get satisfied just getting those jobs done? No. No? I do, once they're done. But all of them have to be done before I have any satisfaction. It's scary. <laughs> right, I on. don't get any satisfaction <laughs> from job one being done. I thought, I honestly thought you were like, I need them all to be done, so I can't do one. Yeah, I'm but like, that, no, but that is it. That's exactly it. So, like, let's say, like, 
make it menial, right, just for now. So, like, I've got to do the dishes, I've got to brush the floor, and I've got to clean the bathroom, right? So once all three are done, I'll feel dead satisfied. But if I just do the dishes, I've fe- I-, I feel no satisfaction that I've ticked one thing off. So, but once that one thing is done... Mm-hmm. It does it not feel like I'm a third of the way there? No. So then all of a sudden the task seems less daunting. No, it's no. more pressure in it. Yeah. It's like cuz now I've started I've ca- I've got to carry on, but now I need to go on my phone and check this and then I'll be on that for an hour and then I'm not getting back up the couch to brush the floor. Why do I need to brush the floor? Who's coming round? It's just me and my dog. Just you and your dog and your bubble. And my bubble. Yeah. Yeah. I just I I fucking love. Someone emailed in uh, and I, I, I'll I'll find out who it is after. But someone emailed in and said, "What things that you do that are, that w- other people would think are boring, mm. do you actually quite enjoy? What are the things in your life that you know are like m- menial? It's not something you'd s- stick in your Tinder bio, but you do get quite a lot of satisfaction from. Yeah, and that is that's when I'm absolutely at my absolute." I feel like a dad when I'm like, right, these are the jobs to do. And I fucking write my little list yeah. and I tick them off like a little nonce. Yeah. Like, and then what I do, this is stupid because I'm not showing my workings to anyone. I write down one of the most ov- like easy ones ever. Yeah, this Like is a, a simple one oh, to be like, first tick, done. Oh, it's, it's Stand a, up, don't shit yourself, tick, tick, yes. Yeah, it's a, that's actually psychologically, I've looked into this, I really have. That's actually like a really, really... Like, for a lot of people, you included, like, people will tell you, yeah, put a to-do list together and at the top make things that you're just going to do anyway so, like, so that you can tick it off. So, like, make a cup of coffee in the morning. Oh, I've already done that. Tick. And because you've already got a tick on your list, it makes you feel better. I don't work like that. Until everything is ticked, I feel just as anxious as when nothing is ticked. Right, but three ticks out of ten doesn't make... No. There's no alleviation. Nine ticks out of ten, no alleviation. So how the fuck do you get ten ticks out of ten? I don't. I just don't do it. I just wait until my house is messy enough, and then I pay someone to come and clean it. Jesus. Talking about ADD, my fucking... My phone. It's because I've got... Finn, do you want to dash off and pick up our esteemed guest, who we will tell who it is in a bit? Good lad. Oh, he's a good lad, that Finn, isn't he? Finny bags... Have you got the pass, yeah? Sweet. Oh, he's a good lad. Good lad. I don't like him, no. No. Um, yeah, he's a good job. Not I mean, he's, a, he's a good lad, but... It's not working out, is it? No, he's a horrible racist, isn't he? <laughs> How can he be racist? He's about 14 different nationalities. <laughs> yeah, but he hates Spanish people. Well, yeah? Yeah. Oh, that's an unusual one, isn't it? Yeah. I can't stand Norwegians. That's crazy. Can you not? No. Nah. Do you know any? Yeah, I should. Well, I for Nordic too. cunts. I do. We, what it be, would be great if people were racist, but towards really random countries. Bulgarians. Yeah. What about Tal Paddington? Is Paddington Bulgarian? Oh, that's Uncle Bulgaria. What's Uncle Bulgaria? Oh, I was in the Paddington Bear. Yeah. No, it's Rome. Is it Romania? Pa- no, Paraguay. Peru. Peru. <laughs> it's fucking hell. <laughs> we went round the map. I got close, though, and it was a he went, in South America. He, he's from deepest, darkest Peru. Peru, yeah. Fuck you, Bulgaria. Uncle Bulgaria. <laughs> That's why I was getting mixed. Peruvian. He's like, a, is he a womble? Earlier in our series, did we come up with racial slayers for countries that didn't already have them, or have I made that up? <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you had a racial dream, That's amazing. I. It was Cameroon, because he called them the Roonies. Oh, yeah. The Runos. The Runos. I knew we'd done that. You forgot about that, didn't you? What I about did. Peruvian? Pervos. Pervet. Pervos. Pervet. Pervs. Pervs. Fucking Peruvs. Peruvs. Yeah. Uh, what about Pakistanis? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I like gag reflex then. <clears throat> <laughs> just, turn, just turn our mics down. And let Adam can uh, roll with this one. Stands. Um, <laughs> yeah. That one. Why? Because you're a big fan of them. Uh, it, 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 the game only works... <laughs> If you don't do a country that is predominantly a different ethnicity to you. Welsh. Yeah. Welsh. But, and then also that's a bit like... Fucking dragon shagging. Dragon Bag- shaggers? <laughs> I'm bored of sheep. That's offensive. <laughs> you fucking dragon shaggers. It's like the flag, innit? Dragon shagging cunts. Um, yeah. Bulgaria is like second world country, so you feel Bulleds. a little bit... <laughs> Bulgers? Yeah. No. 
What? Got connotations that, isn't it? No, bulge. Yeah. 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 Well, like about dicks. No. Yeah, I know what you mean. Oh, you know, I know what you I <laughs> just, <laughs> Mate. It's where my brain went. Oh my god. The bullheads works. The bullheads. Yeah, the bullheads. Let's do Pakistan. <laughs> the fuck did we get there? And if you're going, what are they talking about? Don't find out. Yugoslavia could be the yu gi Oh's. Yeah, it could be, but it's not a country, not a country anymore. No more, no. Yeah, they're now. Do you go fuck yourselves? Czech Republic, isn't it? Czech Republic. Jesus Christ, it's hurting me. What? what? Do you think Czechoslovakia might have, been the, might have become the Czech Republic? Well, what does Yugoslavia become? Serbia, Montenegro, Bosnia. What can we do with Montenegro? Macedonia, maybe? Monty. No. The four Montes. Yeah, they've had a war. I don't know if you clocked it. Belgians, they got really pissed the off. Sprouts, you fucking sprout. Who? Belgians. Brussels, isn't it? Kobe. <laughs> he's not. He's not had enough sleep to do a Kobe. <laughs> Lola. <laughs> Kobe. <laughs> Lola. What about Icelandics? Ice picks. Fucking ice pops. <laughs> the ice You're not even a good one. You're not even a Calippo. You're a shitty one from the fucking from the <laughs> news <what>? agent. <laughs> from the Bulgarian shop around the corner. <laughs> Mate, can I just say, fucking ice pops are so good. Like, it, it's an absolutely sweltering day. And I, ne- I let it melt a little bit. Oh. Are you trying to do a hard left here? <laughs> no, no. Just... Let's invent racial slurs, but what's your favourite way to cool down in the summer? Oh, a blueberry ice pop. Oh. Brazilians. Wow. Brazilians. Brazilians, the nuts. Fucking nutters. The nutters. <laughs> yeah, that is such a hard copy. Hey. It's hard to hate Brazil, though, isn't it? Yeah, what's different like... about pubes compared to head hair? <laughs> You're talking about hard left. What's different about it's been like bothering me for weeks now, right? Because I can't quite put my hand on it. Did you just link Brazilian to pubes? pubes? Yeah. Had you been meaning to do that? Um, I was trying to Darren Brown. One of you's into getting me onto the show. Mm. Mm. He said nuts, didn't he? That's where pubes grow. Yeah. But what is and it? And the Brazilian is a a Bra- Yeah. Yeah. Like, what, what? What's different? What do you mean? Like. Why, why does this feel different to that? Why does your beard? Yeah. That's not your pubes, is it, Adam Love? It is. Right. Do they feel the same as your pubes? It's your face pubes. Yeah, they are face You don't get them. They're pubic, aren't they? <coughs> yeah. Your face. You don't get them until you go through a puberty. Right. Mm-hmm. Do you want to Google? I think your, I think your pubic hair yeah. is, in your, is in your, uh, near your pubis. No, this is pubes as well. Is your beard pubic hair? Why does pubic hair feel... No, never mind. You're getting too far into the question, Carl. Is facial hair pubic hair? I'd say so, yeah. It becomes is it puberty, isn't it? I genuinely thought it was around your pubis. <laughs> You're it's not stupid definitely enough. right. Um, it's thicker and more coarse because it its origins as a buffer. Oh, so it's, it's to... Um, if, oh, it's to prevent friction during intercourse that can cause skin abrasion. So it's rougher to to be smoother. Okay. What are you doing, Dan? Uh, just fucking just talk, talk amongst yourself. There's two of you. I want to find out if facial when did you hair get your first pub, is pubic hair. When did I get my first pubes? I had a little rat muzzy when I was like 13. Oh, no, I mean, shit. What? I'm on the dick. Sorry to break it to you, but that beard on your face is technically pubic hair. The follicles of beard hair are composed similar to the hair on a man's groin and armpits, according to Dr. Bobby Booker, founder of Greenwich Village Dermatology. (laughs) Bobby Booker. (laughs) Bobby Booker. Bobby (laughs) Booker. Have you you just trumped on purpose? I did a celebration fart, yeah. Right, okay. We're wrapping this section up because I'm sick of smelling his boffs. You have got pubes on your face and you're a smelly man. Oh, dirty. See you in a bit. What's happening, guys? Today's episode is brought to you by Supreme CBD. Now, CBD oil's got so many uses. It's good for your mental health. It can help you sleep. It's really good for your skin. There's so many uses for this, and a lot of people are starting to use this and feel a lot better about their lives. We've got a 30% off code for our listeners. The promo code is WORD, W-O-R-D. You can go to Supreme CBD. 
www.ghostbusters.co.uk. You can get some oil. They come in gummy bear form. There's loads. It's dead good. We love this company. They're here on board with us. Go and support them, and let's get back to the podcast. Guess who's back? Back again. again. The party's back, back from a break. Carl, Guess who's back? I've Guess got, who's a, um, back. I've got some back. correspondence here. This is from uh, Indie Clone on uh, Twitter. The gentleman who sent me Pokemon cards not too long ago. And he sent a gift for Mr. Rowe. Oh. So, well, it was, it was addressed to you. It was addressed to me. And you knew what it was and got that excited. Yeah, because you didn't tell me what it was. Because he spoke to me on Twitter the other day and said what it is and showed oh. me. Oh. Uh, so Adam hasn't seen this. Dan hasn't seen this. But let's, uh, let's show them. Okay. For anyone Happy listening. Birthday. I know. Oh, is Happy it a birthday, birthday thing? Yeah, well, you'd assume so. Otherwise, nice one. What have you got? What is... <laughs> Do you know what it is? No. You've got no idea what this is. I've not, honestly. He literally doesn't know what it is. It's a, a signed picture of Kevin Webster. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh, my God. We just said we, are, we need something for here. We need something for on the wall there. That is fucking beautiful. We'll put that up. We absolutely will. I can't believe that. He really looks like me, Dad, you know. Do you, do you know what I mean? Remember me dad? He does look a bit like your dad. Yeah. You've got and my dad bit. looks like Andres and the Esther as well. And I've never seen any of them in the same room. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a wonderful... Doesn't twist. look loads like Andres Iniesta. When he had short hair, he did. Yeah. Yeah. He looks like Andres Iniesta is like if Japan didn't do him loads of good. Do you know, he is on about £25 million pounds a year yeah, yeah. to yeah. play for... Uh, who does he play for? Uh, Kobe, what does he play? Well, he plays for that, Kobe. After yeah. we get a fucking couple hundred more patrons, lad. You know I what I mean? Know who he plays for? I was going to go and watch him. If you don't know football, Andres Iniesta, absolute Spanish wizard. Yeah, we saw Kobe. Yeah. Barcelona, a shit ton of Vizel trophies. Kobe. A World Cup, two European Championships, and then got to the end of his career. Legs were going a little bit, although that had never been his game. And then the Japanese were like, "Why don't we pay you more than never we pay the rest of the squad?" Yeah. Well, have you seen the thing in what they're doing like in the China? Head. Right. So, did you see all all uh, European players went to China to get the money? Yeah. Like Hulk and all them. Lot, not European teams. Yeah. It's slowed down though now, isn't it? Because they've brought in a new thing where you're only allowed three non-Chinese players in your entire squad. Yeah. So what a lot of Brazilians have done is change their nationality <laughs> to, to Chinese. Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> there's a, there's a player. Hate shit like that. There's a player. He's a black player with white hair. <laughs> Looks dead Brazilian. What, like Abel Javier sort yeah, of look? Yeah. yeah, and his name is Fernando. But he's changed his nationality <laughs> to Chinese, and his name is now Fei, F-E-I, Nando. <laughs> <laughs> so they've got round the... Uh, so we can get play for Chinese things. That's fucking brutal. It's mad that. You never really heard of corruption in China? No. 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 Or in football. Yeah. Like South American and Chinese football is usually a bastion of Is it going to be like... Do you know, like, the way we can call Russia's Russian cunts? Do you know what I mean? That's okay, innit? Because <laughs> they're not. <laughs> like, why are you pressing my buttons? Right. Do you know, by the way, it's not it's not Russians Yeah. not have a problem with individual people. And whenever I'm like, I know it's for the pod. I'm not, I don't go around fucking my village in Cheshire being like, nah, 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 yeah. fucking China. Like, I just think it's certain regimes... And how they yeah, treat their people, their it. foreign policy. It's not if you're watching, going, "Oh, I know a Russian bloke, and he's dead nice." I know. I don't, I'm not. Yeah, I, I used don't to hate live above a people. Russian couple called Helena and Dimitri. Yeah. They were dead nice. Yeah. Um, but right, here's my question. Right, we can say fucking typical American cunts, Joe, because like they do a lot of shit wrong. Yeah. I mean, I don't. You might. Yeah, but you know what I mean. Like, if I said that, you wouldn't like grimace. You'd be like, "Do you think?" Right, okay. What do you mean? Do you know what I mean? Right. I quite countries like... where you can't... I quite like Americans. <laughs> what do you mean? Do you mean when... You can't preface what do you horrible mean, like... cunts with that country's name. Yeah. Well, it's back to the fake racial slur thing. If they're predominantly a different ethnicity to you, it stops being like, ah, it becomes but racial, doesn't at, it? At what point can we call China Chinese cunts? I don't think you can. Ever? Even if they just keep killing people and that? Right, but you, I think you've got to make the distinction between the whole of the country, the individual people, people of Chinese heritage, and that horrible fucking regime. 
Right. They're cunts. Yeah, okay. So, like... But you do sound a bit EDL if you're like, I'll tell you who I ate. Chinese cunts. Right, yeah. Yeah, that sounds... I've got I'm just wondering, well, like, back in the this. day, back in the day, when Hitler was a boot, doing his thing. <laughs> a boot. A boot. <laughs> Hello. I'm going to do a little bit of Nazi history, you know? <laughs> i tell you what about Adolf. He was a fucking mum. <laughs> Himmler, he was from fucking Hartlepool. What do you reckon, like, Chinese people were, like, fucking German cunts? Because, like, compared to China, Germans are a minority. So do you reckon that was racist? Um, I think if you apply our sensibilities about social politics to other less developed countries, yeah. you'd be slightly upset. Because I think westernized values we're still working it out aren't we with what's racist what's offensive what's bigotry mm. in this country yeah. in america and whatever like if you go to somewhere like china i just think what they perceive as i don't even know if they are, would be aware of racism they'd just be like <laughs> apparently uh, i've had friends who've been to sort of japan china korea and on the tr like on the tram or on the train, and like my mate Sean, it's about six one, was just in Korea, and like people were coming up to going, <laughs> Brad Godzilla. <laughs> they were like, they were like, Brad Pitt, <laughs> Brad Pitt. Yeah. But like, like, and then just like coming up, not asking, and be like, picture, <laughs> Brad Pitt. Yeah, the amount of pictures which, I got with people, it was ridiculous. Which, which, <laughs> is cause, because wherever he was, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it doesn't happen in Seoul or one of the like bigger cities, but if you're out in the sticks and that they don't see a lot of westernized six foot one guys, they're, they're like, like noticeably taller than the average height there. They're like, you look like Brad Pitt. There's no, nothing thing going, oh, I really shouldn't, you know, because he's a minority in my country probably shouldn't uh, sort of racially stereotype him as looking just like Brad Pitt. And because Sean's from Preston and has never been like, raci suffered racism, he's like, yeah, yeah, they think I look like Brad Pitt. But to those Koreans, no one's ever gone, whoa, 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 dude, Kim, you can't say that to a white person. That's really offensive. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think you can't sort of set our, yeah, I put don't our think set you of rules. Yeah, I understand what, what I mean though. All right, okay. I don't want to call someone on a train in fucking Birmingham, a Chinese cunt. Don't call anybody on a train a their nationality cunt. Right, I know you're short asleep, but you definitely do need to explain this because I feel like I'm not getting what you mean. When you know why like, I... when you say those American cunts? Yeah. I don't know what right, you mean. Right, okay. So, it, here's the thing. Right. So, Hi, Jilly B. Ready? Right. Hi, Listen, no, right. You ready? Yeah. Right. So, people in another country would generalise about us. Right. Yeah? Because of Britain's colonial past. Yeah? So they would call you a British cunt. You don't, you're just projecting... You, I don't know if... I think what Dan's saying about minority works because if you say African-American cunt, it's got much different connotations to American cunt, hasn't it? Yeah. So I think it's the connotation of what national, like race and nationality are actually saying. I, I don't know. I don't know what you, why so, that's relevant. Well, because... You're generalizing. Uh -huh. It's a general. You just. Yeah. And if you go, oh, those Chinese cunts. Yeah. Like there was a worry that it might be perceived as racist. Yeah. You're saying that. But if they are Chinese and they are cunts, because right. I'm only talking about the cunty ones, I'm sure most of them are sound. Yeah. <clears throat> right. But the, the the ones running the country who are killing everyone in that, and having a go at Nigel Lung, me mate. Right. Like, can't we just call them that? You can do whatever you want. I think I think you can run with this baton if you want. <laughs> but I'd like you to do it on a different podcast. So Adam's got a new project in the pipeline. It's called Those Cunts. And it's where Adam gets a globe out, sticks his finger on a country and goes, is it all right to say Pakistani? Oh, no. no, it's not. And that's how you get an email on YouTube. This is China. Uh, have we got any correspondence? Yeah, we have. Uh, this is a would you rather from Carrick. Carrick? Michael? <laughs> Doesn't give his first name. Maybe that is his first name, but Carrick. You don't really hate Americans, do you? No. Right. But some people do. And yeah. they would have no qualms about calling them American cunts. <laughs> do you think it's more more about that person than it is about the country? 
Like, if you're the kind of person who just goes, those fucking Chinese cunts, I'm sure you could probably say it about every country. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, no, not like Sweden. What have they done? Those Swedish cunts. Yeah. Coming over here, building the furniture factories, <laughs> selling dime bars. I'm not bothered about Chinese people being here. The ones here are sound. It's the ones running that country and fucking often people, often the Uyghurs. Yeah. yeah. You this know, is from you know I'm with you on that one. <laughs> I don't know what, what went you on. You brought that back up. What? You brought it back up, and then you got all fucking hissy. Carry. All right, Carly. <laughs> literally don't know what happened. All right, Carly. So not so silent, Bob. Deviant Dan and Finland. I have an idea for. Would you rather? Would you rather be a radio host like mid to top tier, uh -huh. or like Radio One? Yeah. Or a chat show host on TV. Chat show. Yeah, but not a good one. Because then obviously. It's not equal, is it? So we've got to give it a, a bit of a caveat and say... Is it Graham Norton or Nick Graham Short? Is that what we're being asked? Mm. I think it's a good radio show or a low-level TV. Yeah. What's a low-level? Like Mel. Going to be Eamon Holmes or Nick Graham Short? I don't want to be Eamon Holmes. That's not a chat show either. Sort of is. Yeah. No, it isn't. All it's right. a fucking news show. Yeah. I, I, if it's going to be dog shit... I want less people to know it's dog shit. But if it's going to be great, you want to be on TV, don't you? Because TV is going to help project like how many more people are going to... If you host something as big and as prestigious as Graham Norton, and we've given it like a lot of credit recently, it is pretty fucking good. I don't think it's cool for comedians like you and me to say Graham Norton's quite quite a good chat show. That's fantastic. The best on the telly, like. Yeah. Well, Sloss did it, didn't he? This week or last week? Yeah. Daniel Sloss, Sloss is on this week's Graham this Norton week's show episode. after being on the Have a Weird Couch. So there you go, guys. Top quality guests here. I, you know I'm a big supporter of your career. Mm -hmm. When you get on Graham Norton, uh, don't do that Chinese cunts thing. I don't <laughs> think he'll bite. <laughs> uh, Graham, can I ask you a question? <laughs> I at no point, hey, by the hey, way. Hey, Benicio Del Toro, sit down, lad. <laughs> <laughs> sit down. <laughs> Shut up, Emma Thompson. I've got a question. <laughs> when can you say? You know, Chinese cunt. <laughs> Benicio, hey, Nanny McPhee, pipe the fuck down. Listen, at no point did I say I want to say that. I'm asking <laughs> when it's going to be accepted. He's being a spoke. Like, what do they have to do for it to not be racist <laughs> anymore? Do you know what I mean? Because, like... It's fine. Can, can, can I say Nazi cunts? Yeah. Why? What, what, why can you say Nazi cunts? Yeah. Because. Do you reckon back then they said German cunts as well? What, when we were at war with them? Yeah. I'm, I'm sure a few people did, yeah. Right. Um, do you reckon they, people were like, don't say that, that's racist? Do you reckon if the Nazis were about Maybe, now? Maybe, but 70, Do you reckon if the Nazis ago, were about now, right, in Germany, if that was happening now, right, if that started now? But that's the now. issue, isn't it? Because uh, some people equate what's happening in China to the Nazis. So you that's exactly my point. So what you're asking is, what do they have to do for us to go fucking yeah. little gob, gob yeah. shit? Mate, I've said it on this podcast. They're horrible cunts. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Another would you rather. Did he literally take me around the houses to get me to be the one that said it? <laughs> Listen, try and fucking email us. Uncle Larger might be making an apology. I'm fucking not. Granddad Dave is sticking with it. This yeah. is from Meg. I would love to get poisoned by the Chinese government. What? Go on. Are you saying they'd do that? Oh, yeah. Would you rather, every time you have a shit... The cunts. <laughs> you have to Facebook Live the experience. Uh -huh. So every time you have a shit, you have to fucking give them the whole shebang. Or every time you have a wank, you have to Instagram the aftermath. What, the spaff? You have to, like, take pictures of yourself and how you're feeling and then, like, yeah. I'd rather do the poo. Would you? Come time's private. Um, <laughs> just a little insight. I went into the uh, work toilet here as Adam was leaving after the Patreon <laughs> episode. And uh, it was, <laughs> I just went in for a wee, which made it absolutely more painful. I am sure I went in the cubicle that you had been in. There was a guy at the urinal and I was like, there's six cubicles. And... Not just because of COVID, just because I don't want to be like, oh, there's a guy right there you with also, his dick You've got out. a little willy, haven't you? And you don't want him to see it. <laughs> it's not, it's not, you know, it's not making the dick equivalent of Crufts, mate. It's never going to get best in breed. Mm. <laughs> I might get COVID dick, you know, yeah. I've got to watch out. And so I went in a cubicle and I was like, how, 
<laughs> and I remember Adam had just been in there. It was so bad that I had to ring Carl as he was in the passenger seat of Adam's car to check which cubicle, because I was like, oh, there's only so much a mask can do. Nah. Have uh, you heard of people getting COVID, Dick? What? <laughs> Go on. What Go are on. you laughing at? Go on. <clears throat> people are, like who've had COVID, you know, like long COVID, because it's like long term. <laughs> mine, mine would be short COVID. Go on. Some people are reporting their dick looks like a turkey twizzler. Are they? <laughs> <laughs> this dog's not doing him any, him any good. Uh, uh, can we do a? Ha can we do a? Have a word? Yeah, I've got one. Because yeah. we've got tons, and I feel like. Uh, um, I feel like I. I why, why are we just brushing past turkey twizzler? Dick? You what? Why are we just brushing past all these poor people with turkey twizzler? Dick? So has this been reported? The old turkey twizzler dick. It was on BBC One last night. It was it on BBC One last night? <laughs> what? Yeah. God. I was watching. I was watching the one show. Yeah, and uh, and they led with Turkey Twizzler Dicks. Claire Bolden, not Claire Bolden. Claire Bolden. What's her name? What's name? <laughs> Claire Bolden. She hosts the one show. Yeah, on a horse. Claire, it's Claire. Then. How little sleep have you had? Claire Bolden was there. <laughs> uh, Fernando Torres was the guest presenter. I had a really weird dream last night. Do you want to hear about my dream? Go on. I took my dog back, right, um, with a friend of mine, uh, and I was like, "This is my friend," and then my mum turned up. She was like, you don't need to be getting a dog. And then I had that dream like four times throughout the night. Isn't that weird? Why was my mum at the dog place? Why? You're asking me to explain your dream? Mm. I don't know. Um, do you dream about your mum often? No. Do you not? No. Do you? Sometimes it pops up. Yeah. It pop. Yeah, it's a, it's a <laughs> weirdly sobering little bit yeah. of the podcast. But your subconscious does mess with you like that. I really, like, I love that dream state where you're like, what the fuck was that about? Like, those random things. And I used to do a bit about it. It never worked really well. But it's almost like your subconscious is just the most random FA Cup draw of, <laughs> of what your dream's going to be about. It's like, okay, this dream's going to be about, this is going to be an exciting one. It's going to be tobogganing in, oh, oh, let's have a look, Singapore. <laughs> and you can fly. And there's aliens there. And this is your ex-girlfriend, Nikki. <laughs> And it's hot. <laughs> Go. Yeah. Do you uh, talk in your sleep? So Laura has several times told me that, that um, it's part of the reason we sleep in separate rooms uh -huh. is because she snores like a fucking walrus. And I go, I laugh. <laughs> I laugh. <laughs> she's like, she's like, it's, it's terrifying. Yeah, like, I laugh in my sleep in, as well. In, in my sleep, just go. <laughs> no. And that's, that's freaky, isn't it? Yeah. The the worst one ever was when I was with my ex-girlfriend. We fucking talked about this on one of the very first podcasts. This is when I was seeing a girl called Vicky, who at the time was the love of my life, but we were so, it, it was so combustible, that relationship, and she was better off without me. I dream about her occasionally, and you're like, oh, come on. I've been married five years, we've got a kid. Are you ever and then she is? just pops up like, remember me? Are you Remember ever worried that you're going to say her name in your sleep? And then Laura's going to be like, who's Vicky? Well, that's the great thing about sleeping in the spare room and having two big fucking artar dogs barking <laughs> through the night. Be like, oh God, those dogs were like, you cement, when they start barking, yeah, did they say, oh, Vicky, Vicky? Uh, yeah. I talk like mad in my sleep. Um, and like when I used to live with my dad, uh, he said, so <laughs> me and our Jack used to sleep with our doors open. And Jack talks in sleep as well. And my dad said it was like we're having a, a nonsense conversation because I would leave a pause and then Jack would fill that pause with his sleep talk and then he'd stop and then I'd start again. Oh, my God. From other rooms. That's literally like, in you know, in Step Brothers when they sleepwalking <laughs> yeah. together. That film is so stupid, but it works so well. Um, Vicky clocked me doing a voice. <laughs> like, uh, in, in the night, I was, like, restless and it woke her up. And then I went, boys. <laughs> oh dear. Boys. And, and she was mental. So yeah. she was like mental enough that that was like, she wouldn't, She it was one of those weird relationships where I look back and I'm like, oh God, I hope she's found happiness, but it wasn't going to be with me. She woke up and went, right, brilliant, you gay. Like, instead of being like, ah, that's fucking funny, isn't it? You went, boys. I don't know what happened. I don't know if I was dreaming about, I can't remember, but 
out loud in my sleep went, mm-hmm, boys. And she was like, oh, that means he loves cock. I love cock. <laughs> so she genuinely, she was freaked out by it and it wasn't funny. Anyone else would have been like, that's fucking funny, isn't it? Going, boys. Mm-hmm, but so, yeah, you're not in control of it, are you? I, uh, I wake people up sometimes. Like I'm sort of not sleepwalking, but sleep talking and acting out. And I was in bed with someone recently. It wasn't Carl. Uh, and I woke them up to try and... Dirty bubble. Go on. Like, QVC sell them a cardboard box. No. I swear, you don't press that. This is all... This, this is swear down. Yeah, swear, swear down on Martin Luther King, right? Swear. I was like, uh, what are you... What? And I was like, it's a cardboard box. Well, it's amazing. It's loads of fun. Do you want one? We've only got I don't, nine left in stock. <laughs> I don't remember this. I was just told about it the next morning. And she went, I don't know any of this. Apparently she went, will you shut the fuck up? I don't want a cardboard box. And I was like, it's really fun. It's amazing. It's that big. You can get inside and everything. There's room for everyone. And then, have you seen the clip of the X Factor? When uh, the daughter's really shit and then the mum comes in to have a go at Simon Cowell. She goes, I think you've been very, very ash. You seen yeah, that clip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that because she told me to shut the fuck up. And I went, you've been very, very ash. Oh, wow. And then the next day she was like, do you remember trying to tell, sell me a Do you a remember box? any of that? Not a second of it. And she thought I was awake. Right. Because just, I went, you were just being a dick. Because I went, no, it, she thought I'd woke up when I went, you've been very, very harsh. But I hadn't, all fast asleep. God, let us know if you've ever slept, walked, or done any sleep talking. That the, You know, there's an app. There's an app you can, you can download. Yeah. And it just sits there dormant. And then it hears noises and it records it and it basically bunches it all into one file and you can play it in the night. I just you can play it at the end of the I don't night. want to listen to eight hours worth of farts, though, do I? It's <laughs> <laughs> a very nice box and I just shut in it. My cousin Katie, who listens uh, to almost every episode of this, so she might well hear this. Hi, Katie. She'll be able to verify this. She uh, used to sleepwalk really badly when she was uh, like a young teenager. And she wants... Please, please verify this because it sounds like bullshit. It woke up, made a banana sandwich, and knocked on her next door neighbours at four o'clock in the morning, handed it to them, and then went back to bed. <laughs> that's a banana quite, sandwich. That's quite high level sleepwalking. It's dead yeah. nice as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Four o'clock in the morning. Sorry to wake you. Yeah. Here's a buddy. See you tomorrow. Better than sleepwalking a Molotov, Molotov cocktail through the fucking. Yeah. You know, at least it's. Yeah, it's bananas. Nice. I mean, it's inconvenient being woken up, but potassium. I wonder what legally you'd be responsible for at that point if you slept, walked, and like committed a crime. That's what they say about um, is it Kennedy? He doesn't remember doing it. Like they put him into the state. There's a Darren Brown thing about it, isn't there? Is it not Kennedy? Who's who? Who's uh, is it? Jack Ruby? Who shot? Who did he shoot? I'm gonna fucking clue out again. History for the <laughs> retarded. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Ruby. When you've got a, a four grand computer in front of you, lads, he's literally had his fingers <laughs> over the keyboard. Lads, who did Jack oh. Ruby shoot? Um, no, Lee, ha- Lee, Harvey, Lee Harvey Oswald shot JFK. Yeah, but Jack Ruby shot him. Yeah. Oh, he shot Lee Harvey Oswald. Yeah. And yeah. apparently he's like, oh, I, n- I do not remember that happening. Like, not, not even, like, I don't even know who that person is. Well, uh, Harvey Oswald, <laughs> when he shot JFK. I was, uh, maybe I'm getting this mixed up. Maybe this is... <laughs> G- Lee Harvey Oswald shot JFK, allegedly, uh, and then was... Uh, He's not going to sue. Then was arrested. And then, while they were, like, dragging him into a van, they said, why did you shoot the president? And he said, I haven't been charged with that. He didn't think he'd shot the president. I know what it was. So well, you have... It was his brother, Robert. F. Kennedy. Yeah. Someone called Sia Hand, Sia Hand shot him. Yeah. Bobby Kennedy. And, and he was like, I genuinely, like, it was like, there's videos I'm doing it because he pops out the crowd and shoots him. He's like, I do not remember that. Like, I was uh, in some kind of state. Lad, I don't even remember doing it. And I made yeah. him a banana sandwich. Do you do you think uh, there's any conspiracy around JFK? Or do you just yes. think Lee Harvey Oswald was mental? No, I think, there could, I think there could be. I haven't researched it. I know it's a famous conspiracy. But just recently, because I can't be asked arguing, I'm into conspiracies. <laughs> and I think the Chinese, you know, probably did it. <laughs> I think China did it. It really gets us back up that you don't like any conspiracy. I know, I think... I think no, China- seriously, though. JFK was dead sound. A bit like Corbyn, you know what I mean? Like, was trying to sort of fuck with the establishment a bit and was like, no, you should all be in a bit cunty. 
I'm going to sort some shit out. Dead nice. Everyone liked them. You know? Type of lad you take home to your marsh. She's like, he's all right, Tim. You know? Yeah. Like me. Yeah. Right? Who could dislike you? <laughs> and just like, you know, conveniently he got assassinated. Why? That is so lacking in the full story. Any information, <laughs> it was a good historical lad. facts that I cannot be asked answering it. But yeah, How about the, the magic bullet. Yeah, it is exact. Yeah, China. single bullet theory. Chinese cunt. Yeah, there was more than one bullet fired. And yeah, it wasn't just him. It was another grassy knoll. Probably best going into a conspiracy podcast and finding out more about it. No, he was dead sound, and someone shot him. What's that about? Yeah. Conspiracy. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's quite a famous conspiracy, and it's not yeah. never been proved. Yeah, never been. You know, mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if we I, if we could have a moratorium on co conspiracies for one year, I'd be fucking ecstatic. What a moratorium! I don't just a break. Sure. Uh, like, a, no, I'm not going a year without talking about oh, this. Oh, I would fucking love it. How did we get from sleepwalking? Sending you stories of sleepwalking, <laughs> and when you've slept, and this fucking bell, and like, uh, do you remember uh, Jack Ruby? No. Uh, uh, Patton Oswald. Uh, no. Uh, Mark Kennedy, left winger for Wolves. Um, he shot someone, and then I'm like, like, no, you don't know. It wasn't true. Prove it. He was dead sound, and someone shot him. No, but he was like everyone was like he was oh. popular. You know what I mean? Yeah, he had no enemies whatsoever. It's mad that you don't... Only the establishment. Oh, he had no enemies. It's mad that you hate China and Russia, but don't believe in conspiracies. I, I don't not believe in conspiracies, oh. but I just... I've never had a conversation with someone about conspiracies that didn't make me feel that they were thicker at, at the end of the conversation than they were at the start. I'm like... I just think you need to open your mind a bit. I, I will. I will. As as long as you keep your ass closed, I will open. What about five G? Uh, yeah, five G. Yeah, China. Mm. Genuine question. No, I know you hate talking about this stuff, but <laughs> <laughs> sleepwalking. If you've ever done any sleepwalking, have a word pod at gmail .com. Is, is there any conspiracy that you've heard about that you actually do subscribe to? Is there any way you've been like ah? Is there any way you think that's probably? Do you know what I mean? Because like JFK is a big one. I think, like, most people, even when they're like, I'm not into conspiracies, yeah. they'll buy into that one. And obviously 9-11. Yeah. But it's because it's never been proved, and it's just conjecture and all this story. It's fascinating. I'll give it, like... But we haven't even proved gravity. From... <sighs> <laughs> Do you want to know what sums this podcast up? I've got two tabs open here. Yeah. One of them is, who shot JFK? <laughs> And the other one is, why does pubic hair feel different? <laughs> I'd rather talk about face pubes <laughs> for that whole next 12 months. 5, 5G shot JFK. And weird, right? There's an airport called JFK. And, and John Lennon, and he was shot. And John Lennon was, was shot. shot. And JFK was shot. Uh, coincidence. John Lennon no. was shot by someone who falls. He was John Lennon, didn't he? Do you know about that? <laughs> and he was sleepwalking. <laughs> Do you know about that? Boys! Do you know about that, though? No. The fellow who shot John Lennon. Was he Chinese? No. Oh. Russian. Ugh. No, the fellow who shot John Lennon. Imagine. Thought he was John Lennon, and John Lennon had oh, stolen his identity. That makes me want to use Instagram less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He was convinced that, like, John Lennon was a John Lennon impersonator and would uh, just fooled the world. And he was like, but I'm fucking John Lennon. So he shot him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my like, God. This yeah. is not bullshit. In his oh, edit, yeah. weighed up. That's and my identity. Do you know Paul McCartney died in a car crash and was replaced with a look like? Mark Chapman. <laughs> no, that's who shot John Lennon and replaced Paul McCartney. <laughs> Do you actually know about that one? Oh. That's, why like, that's why he's got no shoes on an Abbey Road. Oh. <laughs> and oh, they've left, they've left, they've, me. they've left clues. Yeah. Stop tapping me. They've left clues. Oh, swear to God. Yeah. Oh God. Have you ever heard Hit Me Baby One More Time backwards? <laughs> this is how bad this is. I wish you were doing a Kevin Webster impression right now. Hey, listen, oh, Paul man. McCartney's dead. Have you ever heard Hit Me Baby One More Time backwards? Genuinely? Yeah, right. Get on this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Do you know when you type something into Google, but it doesn't want you to search it, so it doesn't give you a suggestion? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, like Do you know what I mean? Pog. Yeah. Right. I've just typed in Paul McCartney, D-E-A, and there was no suggestion because they don't want you to know that he's dead. You know what I mean? Paul is dead is an urban legend and conspiracy theory a legend that English musician Paul McCartney of the Beatles died on the 9th of November 1966 and was secretly replaced by a lookalike the rumour began circulating in 1967 but grew in popularity after being reported on American college campuses in late 1969 college clever people right so the co- college clever people <laughs> just ask him um, so I co- am I actually going to answer this yeah no you don't think it's real? So there was a, mus- a young musician in Liverpool yeah, who who wrote songs, performed them, was with a, a huge success pop out. By 1966, they're the biggest band in the world. Right, look, Carl, and I'm going to send you this. He was killed or he died? He, he died in a car crash. Oh, he died in a car crash. No one reported it. Nope. And Because they didn't want the world to be sad. Okay. That's, <laughs> how, that's how news works, isn't it? Right, yeah. Get on this. I've sent you this picture. I want you to slide it into this episode, please, if you don't mind. I need to show Dan this. Have a look. Oh, right. his face shame. See? Different shape on his face. Different chin. Different nose. I could show you a picture of me from four years ago, and you'd be like, that skinny guy's definitely not that big. <laughs> that round <fucker." laughs> That's not the same. Yeah. They're about the same weight there, though, aren't they? Look, his, his, his hair's different. That is a slightly older different. man. That is a... Are you mad? No. Okay. Look, look at the shit. Look, at, he's got a proper, like, sticky out chin, and he hasn't there. Do you me? See? So the replacement yeah. is also a very high-level singer-songwriter. From Scotland. From Scotland. Mm-hmm. Right. And they just told him how to do a Scouse accent. That's why he's not very good at it. Mm-hmm. No, he was crap after 1966, wasn't he? Yeah. The Beatles were didn't. I don't think they released an album after 1966. No, no they did release some, but like, oh, they some, did some of their best work, some of their absolute best work. John Lennon wrote a lot of that. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul had already written a lot of it pre 1966. Yeah, yeah. So it was there, ready to go. It's like Tupac when Tupac died. It, Ghetto Gospel hadn't come out yet. It's you know what I mean? literally just like blah 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 <laughs> blah 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 blah. Um, Ghetto Gospel changes. You're a silly person. No. You're closed-minded. This is where conspiracy theories theorists let themselves down when they're like, what about JFK? What about imaginary Paul McCartney? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, what about him? Um, <laughs> that's a conspiracy. It's the biggest conspiracy of all time, isn't it? Yeah. Religion. Yeah. And you're an atheist. So. I fucking hate conspiracy talk. <laughs> I fucking it's love it. so boring. Do you not think, like, religion was invented to keep everyone under control, though? What? Yeah, Yeah. he does believe that. He's an atheist. Yeah. Religion was invented to keep people fucking whipped. It's not a conspiracy, is it? Yeah. How is that a fucking... The religion... (laughs) How is that a fucking conspiracy? Does the religious fucking... The subjugation of the working class and human existence, like, blighted by the holy man being at the right hand of all kings... Emperors, it's not a fucking conspiracy, it's just the history of human existence, right? But it's not like the Pope's coming out and going, Yeah, we invented it all to fucking keep people fucking. It doesn't, they didn't invent it, did they? It's been since the dawn of time, since the first, since the first man went, Jesus Christ, if that sun's not there, a bit scary. Why is that big ball of fire in the sky? Why and then it goes down Jesus? and then I'm cold. Oh my God, I'm a bit freaked out by that. And then like the, the tribal leader went, yeah, everyone's scared of that shit. I should get the guy that thinks he knows about that to sit there and say, listen, don't uprise against me. I'm in charge. And that holy man says that if you do that, because I've been chosen by the ball of fire in the sky, so just stay there, enjoy your shitty life, give some money to me. That's since, that's nothing to do with consult. That like predates Why would he have all said known Jesus religion. Yeah. You just said he said Jesus Christ at the sun. Didn't even <laughs> exist. Conspiracy. See, yeah, that not is a con- conspiracy it's, theory, though. It's, it's not a conspiracy theory. <laughs> that's not a conspiracy theory. So do you think the Pope's in on it? What? Do you think the Pope? I just think you're talking about. It? You're literally talking about the ex- all of the history of man. It, it predates. There's videos of the Pope putting the dynamite in the in the off tower. You're being <laughs> stupid. <laughs> I don't want to end this section. How much can I give you, money wise, to stop talking this drivel? The Pope's in the Beatles. <laughs>
He's uh, so angry. I, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Have you heard the Jenny Holly? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get Josh Jones on the couch, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Josh Jones is in today. He's dead good. You're going to love him. Recently on 8 out of 10 cats and absolutely smashed Oh, uh, was he? Brilliant. Good for him. Uh, was and he? thanks to Indy Clone for uh, <laughs> assigned Kevin Webster picture. Cheers, mate. It's very kind. All the stuff that gets sent in is sweet. Right, let's have a little interval and get Josh on. Jingle balls to the walls, fellas. Support for Have A Word, the podcast, comes from manscaped.com. Precision engineering tools for your family jewels. Now, we all know untrimmed pubes are a thing of the past. Girls don't like it. It's time to sort yourself out down there, and we can help you with that with Manscaped's perfect package, 3.0. 3.0. Now, what's in that package? First of all, you get the Lawn Mower 3.0, which is a, a trimmer specifically for your balls. You don't want to be using the trimmer you use on your face, on your bollocks. That's nasty, innit? And with the skin safe technology of the Lawn Mower 3.0, you can shave away without worrying you're going to snag the bag. No more bleeding balls in the shower. It's perfect. Okay. On top of that, you get a bit of ball deodorant and some ball wipes. These products smell manly. They smell good. You're going to be smelling good down there. You're already putting deodorant on your armpits. Why are you not putting deodorant on the smelliest part of your body? Your balls stink. Time to sort it out. Once you've shaved, once you've deodorant, you can pull on the Manscaped boxes that also come in the Perfect Package 3.0. You get all of this in one bundle, and they've just released this package just in time the Christmas season, you can get this for yourself, for your husband, for your brother, for your kids, maybe not, but you can get it for whoever you want, and I'm telling you right now, their balls will thank you. Also, as a listener of Have A Word, you get 20% off and free worldwide shipping with our exclusive promo code WORD, that's W-O-R-D. You can go to manscaped.com now, use the promo code WORD, and get yourself some of the best male grooming products on the planet. Nice one. Just oh, seeing a, a TikTok video in the break there. Right, you know, in The Lion King. Hi, Josh. <laughs> ah, Get you in a minute, lad. <laughs> no, in The Lion King. Yeah, no, in The Lion King. Yeah. Do you like The Lion King? Obviously. Do you like The Lion King? Love it. Right. You know when Mufasa dies? Yeah? Yeah. Scar fucking. Is it the antelope? Yeah. No, what is it? Wildebeest. Wildebeest what is it? Yeah, yeah. Wildebeest. Right. There's a stampede. And it yeah. reindeers. It's reindeers. Reindeers. No, like a load of days. I think you're getting mixed yeah. up on with Miracle on 34th Street. <laughs> <laughs> is it gazelles? <laughs> the famous Serengeti <laughs> reindeers. <laughs> I, I just remember. Hello, my name days. is Santa. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> um, so, hyenas don't eat dead lions, and nothing does apart from other lions. And there's a scene later on where Scar, after Mufasa's dead, is playing with a lion's skull. So Scar eats Mufasa and then is playing with his skull. Oh. <laughs> after we've just talked about conspiracies, this one's the big one, isn't it? <laughs> JFK, 5G, and now Mufasa. Yeah. yeah um, Jeremy Irons, isn't it, Mufasa? No, Jeremy Irons is Scar. Scar, that's what yeah, I mean. Yeah, James L. Jones yeah, is yeah. Mufasa. Um, Jeremy Irons is very sexy voice. Simba. Yeah. Is that a TikTok you were watching? I, <laughs> TikTok's just usually girls going, dun, 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 rrr, dun, and you're watching conspiracy theories about Lion King. Could we just see that again? <laughs> <laughs> and, like, Laura got into TikTok. I was on it for about three weeks, but it already feels pervert. Like, oh, let's see what the kids are doing. Yeah, and it's very entertaining. But I feel like it was just like the same dance that every queg was like, uh, uh, uh. And it was just like... I try not to watch the dances. You, yeah. can, you can kind of, if you say what you want to watch, it just blocks that stuff out. You teach it your own algorithm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your TikTok algorithm? Just videos of me. Right, uh, no. that's just your own self. <laughs> just, just you don't even go on a feed, you're like, myself. just on my yeah. own profile. <laughs> that was brilliant. I yeah. like all the fail ones on TikTok where it's like, oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. It's my favourite one. Oh yeah, I know that. Where it, there's some, that was where it's like, oh, people born in 90, late 90s are old and then it does that voice. Oh really? Yeah. People born in the uh, early 90s, me. When are you born? What? Dead old. Uh, early 90s. Oh yeah. yeah. How old are you? 
28. Are you 28? Yeah, I love people think I'm younger. But yeah, like, so <laughs> <laughs> I've only just turned 28, so I'm basically still like 25. Oh, I nearly said I'm 28. I'm <laughs> That's not, I'm how that works, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. But, yeah, I say because Carl asked me how old I was, and I just told him that my uh, my agent tells me to tell people I'm a bit younger. Really? Right. <laughs> and you say no. Well, I do normally. Like, <laughs> if it was a producer, I say I'm 24. Okay, you better hope none of them watch this fucking oh podcast. God, then. <laughs> yeah. the agent like just say you're younger yeah. because at 28 you're done, and, uh, aren't you? <laughs> if that gets out, Josh, you're fucked but at 28. Do, but like Jamie Hutchinson, he's a fucking prick. He always takes <laughs> the piss out of me because I like. When we go out, I take my passport with me. And he's like, no one's IDing you. <laughs> but I do get id just not when Jamie's there. Right. Yeah. I, in Liverpool, you get id in a lot of places, no matter what you look like, because they want to know who's in there in case someone gets stabbed. You get scanned into lots of places, don't you? Yeah. Scanned. Yeah, so you yeah, scan yeah. your passports, you know who is in the building at what time. Yeah. And they've got a metal detector at a lot of, a lot of bars, bars in Liverpool. Are you going to? Yeah, they've got a, a, lot, like a, a gun. Lot of knife crime in Liverpool. Choose a life, not a knife. Bad and GL5 yeah. alive. <laughs> Josh is just like, I've got a passport. <laughs> check. check it if you want. Do you yeah. need to check it? You probably do need to check it. Adam's got like a fucking Uzi. <laughs> Knuckle dust on it, lad. We drink at different places. Um, If you were to sign with management tomorrow, right? Yeah. It Like, you know, you, there's a couple of... Uh, like, Rowie Bags Talent Agency. Yeah, right. So you sign with management and they're like, we're going to, you know, the podcast's doing well. We're going to push you onto telly. We're going to get you on a few things. But Dan... Right, can't let anyone know that you're about to turn forty. So, what age are you comfortable saying you are? Am I allowed to wear a hat? Because if I'm not allowed to wear a hat, you can't just wear a hat, mate. Right. I got you a wig. <laughs> Damn, if I, if think... I have to turn up at auditions like this, like I'm twenty six. <laughs> I think you could do thirty four. Thanks, mate. <laughs> what about now? No, no, no with the Cowabunga. Out. You look like Joey and Friends when he has to be <laughs> 19. So, on a scale, I love TikToks and I love it. I just <laughs> absolutely love it. And so I'm just down. Know, like, good... what, 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 how low would you lie about? Uh, so I think I could say I was 17. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Like, if I shave this, I've got a bit of a baby face, so I could be 17. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you looked 33 when you were 17. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the problem me, there. Me and you the same age? I'm 29 as of Monday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But he says he's 22 because he's fucking yeah. mysterious. <laughs> I reckon I could get away with 26. Yeah? I'm wearing 40 like a badge of honour. Yeah. You just lean Fuck into you. it. Fuck yeah, you! I don't know if you could. I, I think, no, I think you could. 27. Okay. Yeah. If I shave this, though, I'd Josh, look this, a lot younger. This isn't the podcast to be nice. I don't know. I lean know. in if you want to lean in. No, I'm being honest. I'm being truthful. What? 27. What? Like. What about Adam's face? Disgusting. <laughs> which, <laughs> which bouncer is seeing those eyebrows wander up going, lad, we're going to need to see some ID here. <laughs> Fucking get it out your eyebrows. There you go. Keep my passport in there. One of the Very knuckle dusters. When's the last time you got ID'd? Well, like I say, you get ID'd quite a bit in Liverpool. Um, unless you know everyone. You know what I mean? It's not to prove age, though. Oh, what? It's not to prove age. No. It's, it's to prove who's stabbing who. Yeah. Basically. Oh, actually, well, lockdown I've, one. I've never, like, get stabbed ID'd anyone. for stabbing people. Lockdown. Do you know? About five times. <laughs> I've headbutted someone in the bar. No. You've what? Yeah. You've headbutted someone? Yeah, you touched me, Willie. It touched your willy. Yeah, they, Tell the story. <laughs> Tell well, that was it, basically. Did it, are you, he, I was at your idol. Some stranger took me, touched me dick, so I just nutted him and ran away. Was this in a gay bar? Yeah, obviously. Okay, yeah, I yeah. just like because that was where the spoons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stanley Bridge, where the spoons has yeah, really gone down. Uh, cruise one hundred and one in Manchester. Oh, cruise yeah. one hundred and one. So, wh- Dirty. No one. Boy. Not one of the higher end establishments in the village. <laughs> no. Cruise one hundred and one's like. Nah, nah. Uh, if you go in cruise one hundred and one and a guy touches your dick, you're almost legally not allowed to be like a guy just touched <laughs> my dick. He's but, like, babes, it's cruise one hundred and one. But I went with my friend Sam, who's well, he's gay, but one of the like muscly ones who's just topless all the time and he's he's a i'd be if i was gay i'd be one of them yeah so he's a house (laughs) and i'm i'm more of like the i like like book little book nerds and little so yeah geeky gays yeah i love a geeky guy have you got a name for that because i know there's a lot of terminology within the gay community Uh, cubs 
Is that joggers? Just fucking geeks. I don't know. Nerds. All right. Josh, no, Josh no. I don't go for terminology. No, I just call them fucking geeks. <laughs> but it's so rubbish because I, I am really genuinely attracted to nerds. So you type that in a gay porn app, it's shit. It's just a muscly guy with glasses on. He's like, you're not fucking fooling anyone. He's reading a book upside down. <laughs> He's like, it's shit. There's not enough focus on it. What, you actually want to see someone's PhD qualification <laughs> before no, but, you watch the pornography they're no, in? No, but I want him to look. Nerd, you know, like, yeah, anemic. Right. like like anemic. Yeah, just like <laughs> literally. Nerd. I'm looking for someone with an iron deficiency. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. don't want to suspend disbelief for for your porn. Um, no, I want it to look real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I I'd just like to just uh, circle back a sec. When this guy touched your dick, was piss leaving your penis at the time? I can't. I honestly can't remember. I just remember him touching my willy, me head butting him. Him falling back and then me going, I don't know what to do now. I'm not away. Is that what you did? You say that out loud? <laughs> I, just, I just remember because I had I don't know what to do him. now. I had what he did, but he went back and he was like bigger than me. And then I thought, oh, fuck it. He's either I've either got a road or something's gonna happen. So I just yeah. ran. You ran? Yeah. It's quite it's quite a baller move headbutting someone with your dick out. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm a bit Honestly, of a baller, though. Do you know what I mean? In Street yeah. Fighter, that'd be a hell of an end. You're a bit of a scrapper, though, aren't you? Because you used to be a boxer. Well, I did boxing for a couple of years what? when I was younger. And now, I think, because I've spoke about it on stage and spoken and stuff, I think people think I still do it. I've not done it in, like, ten years. Oh, so. I heard you were the light heavyweight champion, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you like the... yeah, me and Anthony Joshua, just, we meet up every week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, no. I was in the Olympics. <laughs> just didn't take a seat. Did you ever do any combat sports? Did a bit of judo when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did yeah, karate. Yeah. I believe that. Stopped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> did a bit of judo. He's it, mate. He was in the chess club. I don't know why he th thinks this is so funny. I did a bit of judo, mate. I did um, karate, but I had to stop when he got me finger chopped off because he had a cast on my hand. Because right. you got involved with the yakuza. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, you're starting so many great stories, and I do not want to do want to. My, my judo was just I got thrown around a bit, and I was like, "Oh, this is all right." Yeah. I never even made it to yellow belt. <laughs> what you did karate? Oh, I, I didn't. I was on there for a couple of weeks, and I was like, "I'm really loving this." This was when do you remember Jackie Chan? He had um, he had books out, and you could get little medallions. Uh, I don't know, just me. All right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I loved him anyway. So. Which bit of Manchester did you grow up in? Do you not remember the Jackie Chan? I, I reckon that was definitely legit in yeah. some part. Where are you from in Manchester? Well, this was in Failsworth. In Failsworth. Yeah. yeah, the Jackie Chan School of Martial Arts. <laughs> There's only one in the world and it's in Failsworth near no. Oldham. Do you not remember Jackie Chan's cartoon? I remember the cartoon. I remember yeah. the cartoon, yeah, yeah. And then he, you could collect medallions <laughs> never mind i had all of them i was buzzing anyway so then classic <laughs> story of a young gay man in fails with, is it every gay, every gay guy's like oh tell me about it josh i went through my jackie chan karate phase <laughs> fucking brilliant so then i thought i've got to become a karate master <laughs> so then started karate but then i got my finger chopped off so i just stopped and never uh, went back to it tell me the story. Why, why did you get your finger chopped off <laughs> i was trying to escape from primary school right and i don't know why um but do you know when you've got those metal fences with the three spikes yeah yeah yeah. so i would like okay. try to do one climbing it over there and then i fell off but my finger stayed on Right. Oh. And um, yeah, yeah. It cut through, look through. It's weird. But they put it on like sideways. Oh, is it sewed back on? Yeah, look oh it. Oh my God. Oh shit, yeah. It looks like I've got three thumbs. Oh my yeah, yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, it's at like an angle, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Jesus I could Christ. be useful for the street man, though. If, yeah, but <clears throat> gay men use the fingers as well. <laughs> this goes, this is, and it's honestly, it's fucking solid. Listen, <laughs> I don't know what they put in it, but it's solid. That's so Listen. bitchy when you're waiting on someone. <laughs> What's this? It's a weird old fan. Do you know how stupid I am? Because this story involved karate and he lost a finger, I just assumed samurai <laughs> swords were involved. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's karate that and fails with. That would have been a better story. 
But no, I just was escaping from primary school. I yeah. honestly thought it was a karate fight incident, and then it just becomes you climbing <laughs> over a fence. No, it, I no, had to end karate because I got my ch- finger chopped off in a karate <laughs> fight. No, I was I climbing was, over fencing. I thought he was challenging the fucking leader of the dojo. What? To to a fucking scrap and then the they sensei, got, the sensei, uh, and he got a fucking sword. That was like fucking back down. And boy. he just could at each my finger off. Yeah, with a sword. No. I did karate for a week with swords. No, <laughs> <laughs> with dicks. No, you know karate. Karate means empty hand. Right. It was shit karate. Oh, so I shouldn't have brought swords into it, <laughs> even though two or three seconds ago you were like, I thought that karate thing was about <laughs> swords. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's just like dancing. Karate yeah. though, isn't it? When I only was there for the first couple of weeks, but they teach you the the moves. Do yeah. you know what I mean? You have yeah, to yeah. learn like the dance, the moves. drills. Yes, before you do. I didn't really get to karate. A lot chop of anyone. karate champions actually watch the rhythmic gymnastics and get confused and end up in a fight. <laughs> <laughs> So it's bullshit because he started laughing before he got it out. <laughs> but I did actually do karate for a week and then my dad wouldn't let me go back again because after one lesson, <laughs> my little brother didn't come off the PlayStation in time. You know, like when you're a kid and you're like, right, you can play for half an hour, then you can play and then you can play and then you can play, whatever. He didn't come off in time and I threatened to round. I was kicking him in the head. <laughs> and my dad was like, you're not going back to karate. <laughs> I'm not having you get a brown belt and killing me fucking young guy. I'm not weaponizing this little fucker. Why didn't he just send the brother to karate as well and then you can fight over the PlayStation? <laughs> so that's what I would do. And then you've got the strongest son and then you know who gets everything. You die. <laughs> that's, that's what we do for his will. Yeah. In my last will and testament, <laughs> I they? would like a fight to <laughs> death. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas, Christmas is boring every year. So they're now both training in mixed martial arts. Do kids do MMA now? Is the kids MMA training? That must be. Because, oh, I mean, yeah. karate and judo, I mean, judo was pa- like, really was a pansy version of karate. Yeah. It's basically karate without any punching or How like did kicking. You do it for? About two years. I'm not even joking. It was a fucking two ball. Years? Like, yeah. Did you judo throw me? Well, probably because I'm. I don't know. You've, you're quite sturdy, though. Yeah. You're like thin. Bottom but, heavy. You're thin but thick. You're big bone. You have a <laughs> um, But mixed martial arts is now MMA and UFC is so much more popular. I bet it's even like more popular than boxing. I know boxing's yeah. been around for well, years, but UFC is the hot one, isn't it? Yeah, well, Ronda Rousey. Well, I don't know. Rowdy, Ronda Rousey. People like it because of male ones, but if I, when I see like a woman do something, I'm like, I'm going to do that now. So if I <laughs> if I was younger, I would have been like, I'm going to be Ronda Rousey. Yeah. Because I used to watch wrestling, and then because of Lita, I used to like just start doing like cartwheels around the house and stuff. But UFC's great for like equality in terms of like... There's only basically tennis in UFC that genuinely yeah. women headline major UFC yeah, events, yeah. which is, I mean, n- not the case in so many other sports. In tennis, the women technically get paid more. Because they do less sets. Because there's less sets, yeah. And yeah. it's equal Because they're lazy. Yeah, that's why that is. <laughs> Have a word pod at gmail.com if you'd like to speak to Adam about that one. <laughs> can you ask me a question, a- Adam? Um, is there anything that a woman can do that a man can't do better? Give birth. And no, as in like something you can both do. You asked me this question. Um if there's anything that a woman can do that a man hasn't done better. The question was Is there anything that both genders <coughs> do? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <sighs> Josh? <laughs> well, I, I'm like I'm I'm a typical gay in that way of like I just love women. Do you have yeah. any women idols? Yeah. What are your women idols? <laughs> Not that many then. Condoleezza Rice. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck's that? What? Who's Condoleezza Rice? Doesn't matter. Go on. <laughs> Me female idols. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm really glad this is. You've circled that back on Adam. Yeah. Great. <laughs> I didn't ask the question he did. Um, female idols. Sarah Silverman. Good one. Uh, Joan Rivers. Fab. Um... Any that there's no pictures of them in this room to give you a few clues. Uh, ooh. <laughs> um, Michelle Obama. 
Oh, you're just rounding off big names now. Oh, do you want a smaller name? Well, no. Just Kathy, who used to work in the fucking supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> the woman at the chippy. <laughs> I do like Sue, who works in the chippy right now. <laughs> well, Sue no and one. May, they're Maybe dead I'll sound. They know me by name now. Like the other arms. day, I actually rang the chippy and made me order. And she went, that you, Adam. <laughs> 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 you know you're eating at the chippy too much. We're like, hey, babe. <laughs> God, I haven't even spoken. Oh, my yeah. first job was at a chipper when I was 14. 14, illegal, but fine. Yeah. Mine was no, illegal. not illegal. Not. It is, you can't, you work, can't work till you're 16. No, you can't be like, what? just... You- yeah, with cash in hand. You can't I work. I had all my clothes on. What do you mean? Even you- more illegal. <laughs> you can't, you can work at un- before you're 16, can't you? No. You'll have your tax registered at 16, can't you? Well, what about paper boys? Yeah, but it's cash in hand, isn't it? It's not like... It's, it's not, not legal. Like, it's, what? No, it's not illegal. Yeah, but it's not, not like... illegal to be a paper boy. <laughs> I think you might have heard something about that. But the chippy <laughs> with cash in hand, he will not giving me £5 an hour in my bank. Yeah. yeah I don't cool. think it's illegal to work at a chippy under 16, is it? There's no, pro- it's fine. There's probably laws, isn't there? But it's not... Well, pure. when I was 14, I used to work in the fruit shop that my mum worked in. And I had to stay in the back and cut all the veg up. You know, like when you go to a fruit shop and there's like bags of carrot and swede that's being cut up. That's my, that was my <laughs> job. I was cutting the carrot and swede up and bagging it. And I had to work in the back because I was You were a carrot young. bagger? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound like like a derogatory term, doesn't it? Yeah. Like a <laughs> fucking carrot bagger. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't the Arsenal play them in the Europa League? What? Didn't the Arsenal play them? The chip shop. <laughs> The illegal chip shop. Let's get make it edgy. Yeah. I lose. I lose fingers yeah. in karate. Yeah. I mean, Were you offensive. on display? Were you like in the yeah in the wind? <laughs> <laughs> in, a, in a fish suit, rubbing his nipples with chips. <laughs> Sales are up. I tell you what. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Like, because I have to work in the back so that no one's seen the child. Yeah. I don't working. think it was employment law. I just. <laughs> <laughs> I just. I just. <laughs> Oh my god, there's just some yeah. fruit and veg shop owner who's like, keep that little kid in the fucking bag. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Cal- Adam! Uh- <laughs> Adam's trying to come out. Yes. I cut my finger one day as well. Not like that bad, but yeah, I ate it. Can you g- Google that, please, and check whether it's legal to work underage? Because I'm pretty sure it can't just be legal to give a child cash in hand. Otherwise, why wouldn't everyone just use children? You know, if you ran mass. <laughs> <laughs> If yeah. you ran Matalan, why don't you just employ a the lot of 14-year-olds? The Children and Young Persons Act of 1933, <laughs> which might need updating, <laughs> sets 14 at the minimum age a child can be employed and includes the follow- well, following restrictions. They can't stay... Um, you can only do light work and they can't do more than five hours on a Saturday or Sunday. Okay. Oh, there we go. Well, that's so 1933. That so 14... I mean, there's loads of laws that... Are, but, 14. 14. That yeah. seems reasonable, doesn't it? I'm trying it? to think how old I was when I got my first paper round. It was, I started was it smoking 14? at 12, so I needed to pay for the six. <laughs> so was that your first job, the chip shop? Yeah. How Where did was you that? pay for your six for those first two years? I sold six in school. <laughs> 50p each or three for a pound, if anyone's interested. How did you get them? Um, well, either got people to go in the shop or... Was, got me sister. You sent someone to Spain. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Can you go to Mammut in Calais? No, I used to get people to go in the shop for me. There was um, God, this is quite bad actually. For a while, there was this guy who was like thirty-two when he got out of prison, but we didn't know what he did, and he used to go in the shop for me, um, which is weird. But he didn't touch me, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> And my sister used to go in the shop for my cigs. And then when she had a kid, she was like, oh, no. And then grasped on me for smoking. I was like, you bitch. Rat. Yeah. Did anyone round by your... Because I imagine by yours, the answer will be yes. Because you're from Manchester and Liverpool are quite similar, despite the fact that we like to think that we're not. Did anyone, like, near yours sell fake ciggies? Did you have a house you could knock on and buy ciggies? The ice cream van near me dad yeah. used to sell them. And then he used to put, um, put them in a... Mix-up bag, so no one knew that he was selling six to kids. Our ice cream van used to sell weed. <laughs> a mix-up bag, as in like, <laughs> like what you got? Pick a mix. You, know, you got pick a mix in. You put like six six in there, and they were like Spanish. So fried one. eggs, yeah, and then you know, yeah. few cola bottles, and then six B and H. What's a fake cigarette? It's like, like they're not a, yeah, they're Spanish, but like you, it'll be in a regal packet, but they're actually ah. just like they're just shy ciggies that they've put in that box. Yeah, and you get them. My mum and dad used to sell them. My mum and dad used to sell them. 
That's where I learned how to fucking hustle and bustle from my mile and a half. So you were doing it as well? You were selling cigs? In school, yeah. 50p each, free for a pound. Did you, is you still know the price? 50p each. Is that, isn't that? Not now, you won't make any money off it now. Poor kids. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean like. Brexit, <laughs> yeah. I mean, then it was it were all right. Yeah, so it used to be three pound for a pack of the ciggies, for like a pack of 20. Yeah. For, like the from the fella. His name's Tony. I won't say his surname. God, I'm not. I mean, out to Tony, used to get 200 bifters and it would be 30 quid. We just we just got LMB from the shop. John Moore and Andrew Justice both looked about f- fucking. They look, both looked like they had families. What did like they look 15. like now? John Moore, honestly, was a, was more manly at 14 years old than I am just shy of 40. <laughs> had a full beard and drove a Range Rover. More that's that's my memory of it. Moore and Justice sound like a cop duo. <laughs> <laughs> More John justice. Moore and Andrew Justice. <laughs> it's time to solve some crimes with Justice and Moore. Justice and Moore. Ain't uh, John Moore the name of one of the unis in Liverpool? Yes. Yeah, he started. He actually, <laughs> he actually, he bought Specky Brew for the kids around Norway. Saved up all the money, <laughs> sold some L and B, and then bought a university. <laughs> Specky Brew is that what you call it? Did you used to drink that? Yeah, everyone used to drink that, didn't it? No, I didn't. I've never touched the stuff. Did you? What was your like shit first ale? Like you know when first you, thing I ever drank. Of. Like the the thing you drank when you were dead young. Well, white lightning, white shy. Yeah, frosty or, jack, diamond, white diamond white. Yeah, ah, which is a cider. If you're not from the UK and you didn't go through the fucking grueling rite of passage that was right, we're going down the park and we're getting shit faced. We've got three ninety nine and we need a fucking gallon <laughs> of this paint stripper fizzy cider. It, it was, was great. Brutal. I mean, yeah. it's terrible. But <laughs> yeah, like, oh, it worked it was a great. treat. It was yeah, great. and then did you ever do that where you was like, if you spin around, you get pissed quicker. So you just stood in a park with a bottle <laughs> of beer, and just spinning around, looking like a fucking knobhead. I used to love drinking down the park. It was yeah. so good. What time? Especially in summer, like in winter when the hardcore. You going down the park? You're like, no, I don't want to freeze to death, you lunatics. In the summer, where all the kids were hanging around the park, and just as it started going dark, you were like, I'm definitely going to finger someone tonight. Quality. I loved it, mate. It was so fun. When um, so where my dad lives in Dralston in Manchester, when we used to drink around there, we used to drink on a church, like a church grounds. And he was doing a Saturday night mass, and we was like at the back of the church drinking on the steps, which is bad. Might as well get some free wine. But yeah, but he said the pastor tried to get us in the church. Do you know what I mean? He was like, "Why don't you just come in in the warm whatever?" So we all had to hide our bay light and stuff. And I had a massive. It was like a fucking skiing coat that I got from TK Maxx, right? <laughs> so I shoved two liters of cider down my sleeve. So I'm like that. There like that, I can't move my arm. Walking in like yeah. you're trying to accept the Lord. <laughs> but I need a wee, so I'll go to the toilet while this mass is on. And then, like, I just have a wee, but the, when I come back in, they see the top of the cider. So then we all get kicked out because they're like, you've been drinking cider in the toilet. And I got kicked out of a church. And then from down then, it's just gone down. And that was the start. Yeah. That was when you lost God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, pi- how, pissed? <laughs> how pissed as kids do you have to be when a pastor comes out and goes, guys, do you want to come inside? Like, yeah, this will be good fun. This is strong yeah. cider. Let's see if being inside a church can help. My mum's brother's a pastor, though. Is he? Yeah, in South Africa. And he lives over there. And I said to my friend, like, oh. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. You, you say things, right? And then you skip right over them <laughs> as if it's just a normal sentence. You've yeah. got a South African uncle. Yeah. Who is a man of the cloth. So a load of my mum's family live in South Africa. And then when he was, like, 20, he moved out there to join them or whatever. And now he was in the church. And, and he's been there. He's, like, nearly 70, I think. So he's been there for ages. But um, so I was saying to my friend, oh, my uncle's like a pastor in South Africa. She went, oh, yeah, my aunt is a garlic bread in Venice. I was like, you are thick as <laughs> <laughs> Well, I thought you were just making up words yeah. to sound excited. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking incredible. You oh got any South God. African relatives? I've got a mate who lives in South Africa. Yeah? Yeah. Met a girl in uh, uh, China when they were teaching English out there. And we're, she's from South Africa. She's from South Africa. South Africa. And they've moved back there to live. Shout out to Sean and Gianna. Would you ever move there? I am not sure I'd visit. <laughs> Why? I just don't know, yeah. It's I've been. Nice? Uh, I didn't really like it. 
it was, but I was only about nine. But I remember thinking, because obviously when you grow up in a city, you grow up with like different races and stuff and you're like, whatever. And then when I went to South Africa, I was like, not everybody's treated the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, I think it's the first time I noticed like some shit is fucked up. Do yeah. you, even at nine, did you know, yeah, did, you know did you know the history of apartheid and all that? No, but I knew that my uncle... Did you literally just work it out? How yeah. racist is this South Africa? Yeah. That you, even as a nine-year-old, like, la, 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 la. This is racist, dear. <laughs> I'm not even sure what racism is, but I can fucking sniff we it out. We stayed at my uncle's house, which was massive. Like, I'd, it probably, like, over there, because then he was working as an electrician, which is a good job, but over there, his house was fucking huge. And he had, like, a maid, and um, but she, she was, like, black. And that's when I noticed it, because I was like... She, everyone where all the people with the big houses were all white and then all everyone else who were working there wasn't yeah so I'd, even at nine i was like oh you know yeah they've got a uh they've got a, a difficult history there haven't they but uh obviously like they might have a listeners in south africa like, guys do you know what you're talking about no. but it is a it's a it's a bad history isn't it like we didn't play sport against south africa for fucking years because of apartheid like there was a total sporting ban. Like English teams wouldn't play them. Like the cricket and the rugby wouldn't go over there because of apartheid. And obviously that got changed and then Nelson Mandela came and things are different. But there's still that cultural divide of like, that's where the black people live and yeah. this is the white people. Do you know a lot of people really hate Mandela? And I found that out when I had... So I used to do a stand-up routine about uh, a girl saying she wouldn't sleep with Nelson Mandela. And in the routine I would... I defended him and basically said she should shag him. Uh, and that clip went on Lab Bible and it got nothing but hate because there's a lot of people saying Nelson Mandela is an angel and you should never joke about him. And the other half were saying he's a terrorist and he doesn't deserve to be defended. <laughs> and I pissed off both sides of the spectrum and ve left very little grey area of joy. <laughs> that's that's really one of those ones that you probably don't need to get into the comments on, isn't it? Just referenced him because he's a famous old guy. I'm like, you don't even know about Nelson Mandela. Like, well, you need to listen to our podcast. We don't know much about much. Yeah. No, I I would like to visit. I'd like I'd like to see it, um, but it's it's got a like. Famously, one of the comics from the Northern Circuit, Martin Moore, who yeah. used to be Martin, Martin Big Pig, looks like a Viking, doesn't he? And he's got this huge beard. And they went out to do gigs there. This is years ago. And they were gigging outside Joburg in an area where it's a little bit feisty, a little bit rough. Yeah. And it's just the done thing that you stayed in the hotel complex because the crime's quite bad in South Africa in, in certain places. Johannesburg's got a bit of a history for it. And... Because he just didn't know, he just went off for a fucking walk. Did anything happen? Nothing happened. Yeah. Because he looks like a boar. Yeah. He looks like so. There's a there's a history of South Africa with like like the white people, the the sort of indigenous black people, and then also the boars. And he just wandered around, but because he looks so fucking frightening, he, he just, just left. he just he got left. And the promoter was having fucking kittens when he walked back in, like, never leave the complex again for the love of fucking God. And Martin Moore's just a rock hard Viking looking Northern Irishman, like, hey, I didn't see a problem. It was fine. <laughs> Absolutely fine. That's when you know somewhere's a bit tasty when the promoter's like, please don't leave the building. I know we're going to do the gig here, but stay in the fucking building. I get that when I'm in Rochdale. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, don't faggot, leave. get away. <laughs> stay inside. He lost a finger to karate. <laughs> leave it. There's, um, there's a comic that I won't name because I'm not sure how uh, how public information this is. He's definitely done stand up about it though. Who did gigs in South Africa and uh, he thought he was going with a couple of prostitutes and they drugged and robbed him. A comic got drugged and robbed by South African prostitutes. I, you know when I hear stories about comedians doing stupid shit like that, I don't sympathise that no. much. <laughs> <laughs> if it was a normal person, I'd be like, oh, well, that's unlucky. But when it's a comedian, I'm like, you fucking bella. Like, Finish the gig. <laughs> get a couple of prostitutes. Two days later. I yeah. get really jealous of comics who get to go to like Dubai and stuff. Because like, like loads of comics go and do Dubai, don't they? But I'm like, I can't go there because they'll get fucking killed. But like, I'm just know, like. No, you'd be all right in Dubai. I don't, I don't think so. No, you would. Yeah. What? Do, do, are, are you, so do, shall I just go now? Could yeah, just you, give it a go. Yeah, yeah. Are, are, you, are you talking about your homosexuality? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I know uh, a homosexual man. 
and he lives out there now, and he is camper than you are, and okay. he's doing quite well and over he's there. He's not dead. He started a pride. <laughs> I don't know if you're interested next year it's going to be pretty big Dubai Pride and it's the only places that hasn't got COVID restrictions and I swear to God if Dubai stays the only place that hasn't got COVID restrictions I reckon people will be like I know it's risky but I fancy Dubai Pride yeah. <laughs> it's just one bloke that Adam knows yeah no he's he, yeah it's it's Okay. Dubai is a very sort of liberal <laughs> Islamic country mm. <laughs> no, well the UAE yeah. Dubai is a very liberal have city. You, have you been? Yeah. I've do, been twat. Do, doing comedy there? Yes. Okay. Um, have you been? Yeah. A while ago. I've been to Bahrain several times. Dubai. Um, how many I've been to Oman. days did you see I fucked about? a few, but they were really... <laughs> um, let me just remember. I <laughs> Speaking as a man who's got a mug... Um, no, I understand your nervousness. Oh, no, yeah, I just don't because want to get killed. Laddie yeah. Dean's been out there, and I know he's... Yeah, but he can, like, hide it. But he, I so, can only hide it for about a minute and then my voice hurts. Do you think, what do you think they're going to... They're just like, hello. At passport yeah. control, they're like, let, uh, let me just do the gaydar on you. Beep, yeah. beep, 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 beep. Not good. I don't <laughs> want to tell Larry's story for him, but I'm pretty sure um, he he would have got... If he was a, a camper gay man, he might have been in a lot of trouble out there because he got stopped at the border because he had um, CBD oil. Oh. And, like, you know, for his, his vape. And it's illegal out there. It's a drug. Yeah. So he got like arrested at the at the border, and the the comedy club that had brought him out had to like negotiate with them and get him out. And if they'd have known he was gay, then it might have got a lot, a lot, a lot hairier. Like, yeah. is that is that honest? Like, all oh, joking no. aside, you would you? Yeah, I'm not. I wouldn't even risk it if it's a country where it's like. Either, even if it's just been legalised in the last five years, I'd be like, I'll wait five more. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I'm not a fucking guinea pig. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm not, so. yeah, give them a decade of getting yeah. used to it I and mean, then you can show up. There's an argument to say no one should be going to these places that uh, that where it's illegal to be gay. The money's good. No, they? no, but it's part of their... <laughs> I know, but when it comes... But it's part of their culture. You're like, oh, so their backward horrible shit is historic. Oh, well, yeah. then let's leave it in place forever. Like, yeah. it's just, it's grim, isn't it? Yeah, but as a comic, I'm more like, get the money. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't, get, don't, like, put your fucking... Good money, yeah. free holiday. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'll am i retweet stuff, Josh. Yeah, but, like... <laughs> just I'm don't, actually don't bring it up with any of your friends or online. <laughs> yeah. Where have you been, Josh? Uh, real, just been real. <laughs> for 10 days, and I've got a really good time. I've been to the Sun Centre, shut up. Because I feel like every other comic has done it, and I'm just like... Oh, Bastard, because it's like good money and a holiday. It's, I just want to go somewhere nice. It's club money. It's normal club money. Oh, is it? Yeah. So you do like if you do the Laughter Factory, which is a, a, a great comedy club, and I love Gail and Duncan who run that. Um, they, I hope they don't mind me putting their business out. You get two hundred and twenty per gig, and you okay. get your flights and accommodation paid for. So and you normally normal do like five or six gigs. Money, yeah. So you're there for ten days. You do six gigs. You, you'll get about twelve hundred quid. But Josh, could you? straighten up your set because and and i mean this as I, I, one of your biggest fans i i i compared one of your very first gigs back in the day yes the frog i i, I, I always loved your stand-up could you go to dubai and be like right yeah. i've been smashing all yeah. the puss yeah. <laughs> yeah. smell my fingers yeah i could just do like i oh, love so much pussy I'm so full of been eating so much pussy. I oh can't do it. I feel dirty. <laughs> now, um, I don't Is that Dave Twentyman's set? I, I'm, <laughs> I'm just being a dick. I can do, I can go on stage and not mention it, but I can't hide this. If I could have hide this, I would have done it in school. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this is just the way it fucking is now. I am, um, I'm pretty sure Larry did hit, like the stuff about him being gay on stage while he was out there. So, and I, but I'm not sure. It is risky, though. It is risky. It is risky. And I'll tell you why I know for sure it's but risky. also, in he from Glasgow? So they'll yeah. probably be like, well, fucking attack another one. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> like, he'll probably fight us back. They could work out what he's saying. Yeah. yeah like, they, there's, there's a lot of, uh, <laughs> there's a, a lot of, like, dodgy territory, like, about what you can and can't say. So in, in every hotel over there, there's the picture of, like, the, 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 I royal family. The royal family. So, like, the, the guy who run, looks over Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and then the, the whole country. Yeah, but there's a, another word for them. Because I had a friend at uni. King, innit? 
Man, no. The royal prince. Maybe. I thought it was a sheik. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I had a <laughs> Again, come here for facts. <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend who was from Dubai at Guna, and her dad was a plastic surgeon in Dubai. And I she showed me a picture of then. his car. It was like the fucking Batmobile. Yeah. It was insane. And she was at Salford Junior. Yeah, but you've got to, even if you've got to, even if you are a plasterer from Dubai, you probably are driving a fucking great car. But yeah. Adams, it, you, you, they're a more worried. Surgeon. I know, I know, oh, I know, oh, okay. I know, I know, I know <laughs> he wasn't, I know he really wasn't a plasterer. Same they, thing, really. They are, just... <laughs> they're obsessed. They're obsessed with no defamation of the royal family. Oh, yeah, we literally got told. In Bahrain, you don't even go anywhere near it. And sometimes there are, like, government representatives at the gig, yeah, monitors. Yeah. <sighs> like, we got told when we landed the first time, uh, don't worry about terrorism, uh, all their money's here. Uh, <laughs> so they're not going to bomb this because they'd literally be costing themselves money. And uh, secondly, like, we're... we're Happy with almost anything on stage. Don't say cunt too often. Uh, and also, nothing about the, the royal family at all, because literally, like, if they want to arrest you, there's nothing we can do about it, so don't do that. Um, but I'm pretty sure Larry did his stuff about being gay. And when I did my trans bit, there was a... I pissed two people off. I, one woman got pissed off because she was like, you're transphobic. Uh, who was just drunk and not listening. And there was a, a local guy who was pissed off because I say in that routine like trans people should be allowed to choose their gender and whatever and he's like it's disgusting and they were both arguing with each other in the audience oh my god that's amazing as a comedian yeah. but I tell you what, I'm tagging out if you could just fucking <laughs> deal with each other and have that horrible conversation I, I hate it when they tell you like so they say you can't talk about the royal family I hate it when you go on stage and they tell you anything when they say oh you've someone's birthday I don't give a fuck like yes. fuck off <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck off. And when you, birthday. when you first start emceeing, you like, oh, you'll do it. Yeah. Now I just say, oh, I forgot. Fuck oh, off. it's it, the worst is when a promoter, a really good promoter, sets a room out nicely, yeah. fills that room, sorts all the tech, and then picks good acts. And at that point, lets the lets the show happen. Yeah, they, they don't go, right, just, just to let you know. This is how this room goes, because I fucking know this room. Don't say this, and it just makes you go. I'm gonna fucking it. say it. Well, I would do that. Uh, depend on the gig. Like Dubai's <laughs> different. No, the Royal Family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Adam's like, oh, you don't want it. I've got it. I've just but written. If I'm doing a fucking pub gig in fucking Lancashire or fucking Yorkshire, and they're like, oh, by the way, they don't like the word cunty, and I'll be like, right, first word. <laughs> What's up, cunts? It's my mum's favourite swear word. Cunt. It's everyone's favourite swear I already swear like word. your mum more because of it. <laughs> it's a favourite one. I remember years ago, very long ago, when I had a girlfriend. I, uh, my girlfriend was at my house and then... Do was, this in Dubai, this bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I said to my mum, like, oh, because I thought she was posh. She had a garage. Anyway. <laughs> anyway Swanky. <laughs> I was like, uh, she doesn't like the word cunt, you know, she's quite to do. So then my mum was like, Okay, I won't say it. And then all I could just hear me, this cunting dog, this cunting house, <laughs> cunting stinks in here. I was like, oh, fucking hell. That's so funny. Amazing. What was her name? What? The girl. I'm a mum. No. <laughs> the girl, What's your man's name, lad? Come on Anne. here. We want to know about your family. Anne just Ward get... is my mum's name. What was your first girlfriend's name? Um, well, Jess. She wasn't my first. My first was called Jade. I'm still friends with both of them now, kind of. You are friends with all your exes. I I am. We were just with me. Yeah. Uh, we were just talking about it before we started recording. Josh split up with his boyfriend in the first week of the first lockdown yeah. and then lived with him till... September. Oh, Jesus. So we live from the first of Ma from whenever it happened in March till the end of September. Was there any lockdown non committal hanky panky? Yeah, I'd like twice, just to scratch <laughs> the itch. But like a, a couple of months in between. My bum holes itchy. <laughs> yeah, get it for me. But, um, but it wasn't as like. I think both of us knew. We were just doing it just to get it done. But it wasn't a nasty... It obviously wasn't it was a nasty... It was Because no one has a nasty breakup and then's like, right, you fucking bastard. We I know it's a one-bedroom flat, but I can't get out of the tenancy for another six like, months. Like, we're still mates. Now I was t texting him yesterday. It was like, luckily, the best breakup you could have. And we still live with each other. How did you... What did you do to... So he went on the sofa and I took the bedroom. 
Nice one. Yeah. Well, you won that one. Yeah. Well, I don't How know. How was that decided? Um, I had the bedroom. <laughs> 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 I just said, oh, I'll have the bedroom. Just got your monkey finger out yeah. and went, just remember. Yeah. <laughs> I've I done just, this to my fucking poke his ribs. Um, <laughs> I did accident, accidentally break his leg, though, when we was together. That was an accident, though. It wasn't like domestic abuse. What? When, <laughs> okay. When we was together, we was in Edinburgh. And we was like tie fighting, and I um, I pushed him over, and he fucking snapped his leg, and then because he snapped his leg before, I, I have to promise it was an accident. But then, so we went to the hospital, and I, f- I felt like a domestic abuser because the woman was like, "Oh, how did you do this?" And he went, "Oh, I fell over, but it was me." And I was just sat there looking at him. Like, <laughs> how did you? Do it? <laughs> how did you do it? <laughs> But he did do actually. you need to come in a different room, love? Can we just have a... Uh, oh, my God. But, yeah, so um, so I have to be friends with him or he could fucking grass on me, do you know what I mean? So you used to be a boxer. You had both people <laughs> and and broke his in leg. toilets but that and you broke an someone's a, leg that by w- accident. That was a genuine Have accent. you ever hurt anyone else? Emotionally? Too <laughs> nice. Uh, um, no, yeah, but that was an accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep saying it, it'll come true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm friends with all my exes. <laughs> They but, fucking better be, mate. But yeah, we um, we split up and I thought, oh, fucking hell, I'm going to live with my ex-boyfriend. I'll get loads of material out of this. And then we got on with each other fine. How but, did you, what did you do day to day to, because that's quite an intense six months of one being on the couch, one being in a bedroom. How have you got through, like, like it's, it's ended friendships, it's ended housemate relationships, it's ended marriages. And you're six months out going, that was fine, honestly. But we never argued when we used to get, neither of us are right, argumentative people right and if he, if i was starting to get an idea i'd just go for a walk do you know what i mean but we he, he did what he did in the living room and i had the bedroom and then in like the afternoon we'd just watch like a film together and then it was nice we kept our distance but um, we still <laughs> this is the best we've ever got on <laughs> it, it was it was really lovely actually <laughs> What a nice story. Your breakup's too nice for this show. Your breakup sounds like my, my marriage. <laughs> <laughs> we do things over there. You sleep there. I sleep here. And sometimes we watch a film together. But, <laughs> but we still, yeah, we still text like at least like twice a week. We get on fine. Just keep in touch. Do you not think that because you broke up so well, it was it was meant to be? Nah. <laughs> no, <laughs> not. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I'm a catch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I genuinely don't think it were meant. I think we got on better when we split up because it was like, I no think pressure. I think we should have been mates from the get-go yeah. but because we met on a dating app, we thought we had to fuck. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But we, I think we were It's just, on the terms and conditions when you tick it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you we have to fuck more anyone. made to be mates. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? How long it's were like you together? Stuff. Only like two years. <laughs> right. How's being single in a pandemic? Well, oh, um, shit. Because I'm back at my mum's as not, well. Not so breaking the rules. Back there. at my cunting <laughs> mum's. <laughs> um, not, not breaking the rules for a lot of I haven't of shagged anyone in months. I'm, I've been losing weight. Listen, I'm holding out now so that I'm, I'll rather wait a bit longer so that when I'm doing it, I'm like, ta-da! It's like Joseph and his Get yourself some glasses, call coat. yourself a nerd. <laughs> yeah, I just look sexy. Touch this dick. Yeah. I won't headbutt or anything. <laughs> Shall we have a uh, a little interval? Yeah, I need some chocolate as well because I'm getting lightheaded. I need a wee. Right. Okay. Okay, good. Great point for a break. <laughs> What's happening, guys? We are thrilled to announce that this podcast is sponsored by the brilliant team over at bettinggods.com. Now, if you're like me and you like a little bit of a bet on all sorts of sports from footy to horse racing, cricket, hockey, tennis, anything like that, the people at bettinggods.com Dot com are the number one tips to size as far as we're concerned. The sponsor in the pod. If you're into your betting, head over to bettinggods.com right now. Get yourself some tips and they'll help you bag some winners. Let's get back to the pod. Right. Final section of episode. What are we on? 103. 103. It's 103. Yes. Um, you moving to London? Yeah. Well, I was that's one of the reasons we broke up as well. But yeah, I'm supposed to be moving, obviously, like gigs and stuff. And then I'll come back up here all the time to make the money on clubs or whatever. Yeah, Mate, that's the touch, isn't it? That's what Joe Lysett did. Mm. He was down in London, got a place in London, 
And then when he was up in Birmingham, stayed at his parents, and he basically did half and half. Yeah, that's not going to do to stay at my mum's. The only thing that scares me about that for you, and I don't want to piss on your chips, every comic I know that lives in London who isn't from there is miserable. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but I'm not a miserable person. London will get you. It, it <laughs> fucking won't. You can try. It won't. I think I'll be all right. Because when I started comedy, I tried to live in London with my friend Tora, and it was two of us in a, in a bedroom, so it's two single beds, and that, that was shit. But I'll go there with, like, making all right money off comedy. So I'll be able to do stuff. Yeah, yeah. It'll be different. And I'm going to, like... I know that I'm only going to be there for a couple of years, so I'm just going to have fun. Yeah, Manchester's there if you, yeah. when and if, isn't it? Yeah. So it's Was like, that Tory who flyered for me when you flyered for me? Yeah. So I met Josh. I th- had we met before? I don't think so. We met when he flyered for me in 2017. Like that year that I put like a, a big flying team together for that small room. Josh was one of my flyers. Oh, funny! It was, yeah. uh, when did I compare your first gig? That was my that was my second gig. That was 2015. God Almighty, oh that feels like longer ago. Yeah, so five years ago. But because um, do you remember? I didn't. I I didn't know you had to have five minutes on the gong. So yeah. I had three minutes and then went to walk off. And you was like, "No, carry on, carry on." I remember. I remember. This sometimes is a compare where you. Well, you've been doing it a bit, and then you compare new nights. You see rough diamonds, and it's the most fun. Yeah. It, the 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 three acts that are most fun to watch are the are the people who come down from like Glasgow, and they've been doing it a year and a half, and they're decent. Yeah. Or they come up from London, or they do a car share from Cardiff or something, and and you're like, wow, that act is ready to crack on and yeah. move on the ranks. And then there's the lunatics who are insane, do not know what they're doing, and just watching them be like, it's fucking great. But then also the people who who come on don't really know what they're doing, aren't sure what's happening, and are fucking funny. And you can tell, I remember seeing you at that, that was... Wait, and it was you still do it now sometimes and so you're like, Are you alright? My fucking end you. Yeah. <laughs> and it and it totally took me back. Like yeah. it's so funny. I hadn't seen anyone do anything like like my name's Josh, and then all of a sudden like Aggressive. But I will fucking end you. Aggressive. I remember that year when you fired for me because you really made me laugh one day. Because you know, like in Edinburgh, when obviously the people who fly for you for your show up there tend to be other comics or someone who just wants to make a bit of money so they can be at the festival for a, a few weeks or whatever. And you did the full run for me. And one day, you know when you get a little text from a flyer going, I'm not coming in today, I don't feel well. And you're like, bollocks, what happened? And you text me and said something like, I'm not coming in today. I got really drunk last night. I've shagged some guy and I don't want to leave yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a Brazilian guy. Ah, oh, listen. I, I just loved the honesty of it. I text back, I was like, yep. Yeah. I hadn't finished what I wanted. Do you know what I mean? I was. Getting, I ain't got what I wanted. Yeah, I was. I, I was. I what? Was, I love yeah. it. You can't really bollock <laughs> someone. Oh no, like, I loved it. The honesty of it. Yeah, fuck some guy, and I, I, he, I want to do it again. He was. He was so fit. He <laughs> was really, like. I didn't deserve it. I, oh, it was great. <laughs> I didn't deserve. He was thank so you gorgeous. So much. Was he good though? Because I always think. Oh, sometimes know, honest, the stunners aren't so. His face was minging, but his body was. Insane. <laughs> Just he had literally. the best bum I've ever seen. You're yeah. like, mate, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, Mingan face. So I forgot about that. Yeah, but, it was yeah. really, really funny that. It was really funny. I could imagine you being quite good at flyering. I was, and then... When you weren't banging a Brazilian <laughs> guy. <laughs> yeah, I was quite... I think I was good at it. And then when it got to the point where it was like, I'd, like the year after, I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. And then last Edinburgh... I didn't have to fly her for the show that I was on. So I was like, now I'm never going to do it again. But I was all right at it. I'd just be like, ah! and then. I've done five Edinburghs, and the only one I flied for was my the last one in 2018. And it was it just, always fly her for my own show. Uh, yeah, I think it was partly becoming mates with you and just, I. I rang. It was the weird. What well, was one of the weirder conversations of my professional career? Going, I'm going to ring a comic that has been doing this nine years less than me, and go, "How do I need to sell this Edinburgh show?" And you were like, "Get out there, do your own team." And I did, and it it it, it 
it helped fill the room. I didn't mind it. I was in charge. I wasn't paying out to a promoter. I wasn't losing money because they should have been doing the flyer in. I got out there and so many of the people, I could just be older and like, I want to fill this room. I want to yeah. do a good job. And when they saw you out there and you had a really nice poster and you had some good credits like Comedians Comedian, Best yeah. MC, a short award nomination, some good reviews, they were like, it, it really helped the relationship between audience and comic. Flyer I had my yourself. most fun in the room because people were turning up going, yeah, we like you, we met you. Instead yeah. of you being this faceless, like, I'm too big for this, you'll have seen some students doing it for me. It yeah, helped. Yeah. It, it definitely helps. Like, it's a bit of advice I've ever got. Do you know who else was a great, like, uh, member of the team? Like, yeah, another comic was Harry Staccini. Harry flyed for me that year as well. And he's so affable. He'd just walk up to big groups of people and it, he'd always have a backpack on. And I think he just looked like a lost, like, Eastern European lad who was going to go up and go, excuse me, do you know how to find this place? So he was going to those people going, yeah, all right. And they'd go, you okay, mate? And be like, yeah, I just want to tell you about this show. And he had such a, he, you couldn't say no to him. He had like that last 20 minutes when you're looking to fill the room, he got so many more people in, Harry. Oh, he was a I beast. Look, Shout to Harry. Yeah, that day, that that year, I, I flyed for Chris Washington's show. And then as soon as I finished that, I flyed for yeah. yours. And then our show went till about half 10. Yeah. Well, she had my room the hour and a half before me. So you didn't even have to move, really, did you? You just had to I put his flyers stayed, in your bag and get my ones out. I had a little five-minute SIG break and then got back to it. Brutal watching someone fly a badly, in it? And they're just like, they're like, working for an agency. They don't care. And they're just like... I'd rather that than the fucking, like, knobheads who just go too far. There was this stupid bitch across the road <laughs> from where you did it. Oh, it did be fucking, I did. Every every day, I just hear her go, kabam! And I just wanted to go and kabam her in the fucking face. <laughs> I was want... like, yeah. She, yes! was, she was always like, kachoo, kabam! And oh, I was no. like, get it by the bus. <laughs> <laughs> she was a gobshite. Yeah. Kabam! Yeah, she had like, like one of those, you know when you can look at someone and tell they stink? Like one of those people. Do you know what I mean? I know. I've yeah, I sort that. of do. Yeah. Really. I yeah. saw that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I smell it. <laughs> she was fucking ugly. Yeah, it was fucking unbearable. But she'd do that to me every day. And I'd be like, you've seen me every day. You know I'm flying on my own show. But you! I can't. But she'd do like with her legs like, oh yeah. And it was oh. just like, what are you doing? I don't even know if you can make those noises when you're white. Yeah, they, and she's just like ah, ah, in the street. I'm not taking a flyer. That's racially because <laughs> all the I know a lot of black people are like Kapow! Carl. Yeah. Have we got any correspondence? We have. Yeah, my camera's gone off, so you can't see me, but you can hear me. Uh, that fucking camera. This is from Lewis Watts. Uh, I hope you all keep him well. My question is. What celebrity death had the most impact on you? So any celebrities died and it's actually like you've actually Mother cared or... <laughs> Did that hit you hard? <laughs> Did you? Did you right, die, Do you want a minute? Do you need a minute? It's just weird to bring it up today. I was thinking about it on the way here. Yeah. yeah. We mentioned dead mums before and you didn't seem bothered, but Mother <laughs> Teresa... <laughs> Mother Teresa... It's a celebrity though, isn't it? She's yeah. not a celebrity, is she? <laughs> yeah, she's celebrated. She's a famous person. I think you could cut she, Carl. I think there's a difference between celebrity and famous, though, isn't there? She's an icon. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Stick her on the wall. Yeah. Another one of my female icons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whoever, we've just been sent Kevin Webster. We would really like someone to send a postcard. A signed Mother yeah. Teresa picture. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello, lids. You uh, fucking rats. When did she die? Old way. Oh, oh mate. <laughs> Time blurs when you're so gutted yeah, about something. Of though, it? <laughs> she was such a huge part of your life at this point uh, as well. well. I think she died before I was born. <laughs> no, no, you were alive. Oh, I was. You were only oh, five yeah. years of age. Though. But it felt like... I was five. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what but like... In the 90s? 97. She, she had such a... Like, posthumously, she had such an effect on my life. I, I found out about it after that, and then I was upset that she died. Yeah, but have you, have you heard about the conspiracy about Mother Teresa? <laughs> what is it? That she's still alive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and she was in Bewitched. Yeah. 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 No, no, that's a true conspiracy. And that's why that song starts with, some people say I look like my dad. <laughs> <laughs> she just the father. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Adam's his mother, Teresa. Dan, any... Um... No, it's actually Alan Rickman. Do you know, five years today. Five years today. Maybe. I reckon it actually was. Maybe oh, do you know? no, it was Kobe. It actually was Kobe. 
And I'm not a basketball fan, but it was just like it was the way he died and his daughter going with him. It was Kobe. Oh, yeah. oh, Spun yeah. me head. It was the horrible. Daughter, the daughter bit's what? Mm. what? Yeah. In the middle of a shit year, that was a bit much, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Kobe. It was and I don't know why. I remember talking to you about it. Yeah. Saying like oh, this has affected me in a way that I can't no, really it, explain because I'm not I wasn't a fan also, of his at all. The fact that his daughter died it as was well. His daughter bit that was the, the uh, maybe yeah. yeah. The mine's bad wow. death. He's like, if I'm being honest, mine's by a boat. You are? Who? <laughs> Kirsty McCall. Yeah, that's the name. Yeah. Is it? The, she died what? in a speedboat. Yeah. <laughs> did, did, no one did, did, did know that. Capella chopping head off. The, yeah, ca- yeah. the Capella. The Capella. <laughs> Fabio <laughs> Capella. What's he called? The Capella. The, the Acapella really <laughs> uh, Mine was one of the Chuckle Brothers, but um, it's not quite. Which one Which one of the Chuckle Brothers Barry. is dead? Yeah, Barry, really. It's... I just needed to remember which chuckle brother it was, <laughs> but it's really cut me deep. It's cut me deep so I much. I feel like with like a good bit of makeup, you could replace him. <laughs> As a member of the Chuckle Brothers. <laughs> yeah. Like it wouldn't take more than an hour. In in the one who's alive. <laughs> Horrible cunt. Oh. The, Paul, the, s- 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 go on, sorry. the one who's alive, he's related to those people in Blackpool from Gogglebox. I saw that on the internet the other day and oh, I was is like it? Intra- the one pub that, quiz? Oh, the one that lives. They live in the caravan. Pub quiz? No. Um, the <laughs> When's that coming up in the Black Horse? <laughs> <laughs> it's the brother and sister, isn't it? The brother, yeah, the brother and sister and of Goggle Box. From yeah, Goggle like, they're, they're, they're younger. Yeah. They're younger. Yeah, the yeah. younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, Goggle Box is weirdly fucking quite good television. It's yeah. great. Is his second name Chuckle? Barry Chuckle. Yeah. Gone it is. Too. It is Chuckle. Yeah. 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 On his birth certificate, Paul Chuckle. Paul and Barry Chuckle. Just so happens so, that um, it's a funny word and they went into Mother Kobe. Teresa or Kobe. Barry Chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just threw grief. Couldn't remember specifically which one. Yeah, of course. Do you know why it keeps coming? Because someone that we follow on the Have A Word Twitter account, at Have A Word Pod, retweets a lot of stuff from fucking Paul Chuckle. It just comes up occasionally. I'm like, why am I seeing Barry Chuckle <laughs> memoriams? <laughs> Stop making me give a shit about Barry Chuckle. <laughs> Genuinely, is there a celebrity death that's got here? Because it's obviously not. I think it's funnier saying Barry Chuckle than Kobe. Yeah. So, you know, I went with Kobe. I went with Barry Chuckle rather than the, yeah, Kobe because his daughter died. Wanna, Great question. I want to answer the question. <laughs> it's Alan Rickman for me. Yeah. He's part of like my formative oh, yeah. years with Harry Potter. And Alan Rickman. He's my favourite. Favorite uh, I mean, if we're really doing it, it's Robin Williams. That, Robin oh, Williams. Yeah. that was horrible. Mine's yeah. Carolina What a way to Hearn. go, though. Carolina Hearn. Oh, yeah. That was a body. Yeah. Carolina Hearn oh, from really? Rolf Hamlin. I thought yeah. you meant Caroline Flack for the second then, which wasn't... Uh, Carolina Hearn's that. death will always be now attributed to the TV warm-up where they made me go on to do TV warm-up after playing the bit from the royal family where Ricky Tomlinson, like, sort of... When talks to her ba- when she's having a baby after the baby oh. is, that, that, is that really what hot scene, yeah. yeah so after Carolina Hearn died I was doing warm up at Salford for the BBC uh, for the BBC showcase the Salford <laughs> showcase and you had to go on after that second night I've got Johnny Vegas Peter Kay in the building Johnny Vegas and his uh, agent Bev absolute pair of fucking legends in the audience pressure's on do you yeah. think the night before I had Russ Abbott who was like a childhood hero of mine just a very pressurised, you're the TV warm-up guy. No one gives a fuck about you. All these famous people that you care about are in the audience and we're going to undermine you every step. Carolina Hearn had died eight months before and they were like, Dan, didn't tell me in the booking, just, Dan, we're going to do a little tribute to Carolina Hearn. Um, the director was going to come on and speak about her because obviously it's so important. This is not just BBC, this is Northern BBC. Yeah. She's so attached to that. They played the clip, spoke about her, everyone's down. Then they played the clip, tearjerker. Then they electronically closed the curtain. They didn't want anyone to go on after that because it'd be too sad. And they asked me to walk out at the same speed of the curtain <laughs> to start the TV warm-up. There was, there was no break. There was no... But they literally played the most tear-jerking bit of the royal family. The whole crowd is like... Oh, if I even Johnny the- Vegas looks sad and then fucking numb nuts <laughs> has to time his walk with the curtain. I went, you all right? I'm the warm-up guy. And was like, <laughs> yeah, that was tough. Oh, that's a hard gig. Yeah, I just went, Oof. I just went, uh, that was really moving. And uh, this isn't going to be easy, but my job is the TV warm-up guy. So we're going to crack on now. 
dry your eyes. I just had to try and make it funny. Fucking hell. Have you ever met someone famous and like been like overwhelmed? Um no. No. I, like I've got a little bit starstruck, but not like ah! I cried. With who? Saran Jones. Saran Jones from Coronation Streets and well, the Bill. S- well, Scott and Bailey, which is my Game of Thrones. It's have you not seen Scott and Bailey? Oh, what's the fancy Saran What Jones? have we just watched? Yeah. Gentleman Jack yeah, last that, year. Yeah. Oh my god, that's so good. Yeah. She's amazing, Saran she, Jones. She's she's one of the best people that's ever lived, I think. <laughs> one of the best. <laughs> so so yeah. where did you meet not her? Not actress. So I was working as one of those, you know, charity muggers in the street, just right. trying to get people. How old were you? Nine. It's fucking illegal. <laughs> I was trying to sign get people to sign up to this charity. And you what was told, the charity? I was, oh, it was dead hard sell. It was like a ten pound minimum about for deaf kids. Who's yeah. got to fucking put money in for that? It was well had. Anyway. Yeah. What? <laughs> Death Kids just doesn't do no, the metrics, like, does it not? It was, was your pitch falling on get... deaf ears? Oh. oh, my God. Everyone, one, two, three. Kobe! <laughs> um, oh, that literally dishonoured his memory. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. But, yes, yeah, so I was doing the fundraising. You're pleased with it, that one? <laughs> Sorry, Josh. No, don't be down. <sighs> but, uh, so, yeah, I was doing the fundraising, and you get told to fuck off all the time, so it was just whatever. And then I just turned around, automatically started doing the speech, and she was there, and I just froze and didn't say anything. And she looked at me like, <laughs> and just, like, walked off. And, and then I, around I, I dropped my clipboard, ran in the Arndale Centre, went in the cubicle and cried. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> I was just hello? like... So overwhelmed. Didn't you say hello to her? No, I couldn't. I'd, there's some people, I'm not very good under pressure, and if there's some celebrities, like if Adele walked in this room, I'd just kill myself. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't well. speak to her. You couldn't speak to Adele? No. Why? I'd fucking, because I just I'd sing it. for Adele, mate. She's w- so normal, though. Never mind, I'll find. Oh, I'd God. be too like, I just like her too much that I just, I just, I couldn't, in case it's bad. It ruined the experience. Did you see that thing with Adele where they got some Adele lookalikes, lookalikes I've watched and they it were like, so many yeah, the tri- <laughs> they were like the Adele tribute acts, yeah. and then they put the prosthetic makeup on Adele. If I was, and then made her pretend to be an Adele tribute act. But I was, quite... and then she went on at the end, and it was great. The six of them were all like, well, and like they start going, hang on, is that is that here though? It was That's a- actually here. She does come off as pretty fucking sound, Adele, doesn't no, she? No, she does. I was a bit pissed off with those six, though, because I was like, fucking hell, you're a bit underwhelmed. If it was me, I would have been, like, scriking, <laughs> like, oh, well, I don't deserve it. But they were just like, oh, that's Adele. Oh, God, I'm like, you're I'd supposed to be fans. Anyway. <laughs> they, didn't, they, didn't like they didn't give a fucking shit. I was quite underwhelmed with their reaction. Well, they didn't kill themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is there anyone you'd have that sort of reaction with? Like someone famous. Oh, I don't. Who who would really, who would get you? Is it someone from comedy? Or have I been sort of, have we done enough gigs to know how not to act like a bell end in front of famous yeah, comics? I don't think there's a comic now. Comedy doesn't do, like, because comedy, because you, you do it and you know the, like, steps and stuff. Yeah. It's not as, like, fascinating. But I don't know nothing about music. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Denzel Washington. Ooh. Be a mad one, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, Tom Roberts. Hanks. These, the yeah, that no. that level of like, they have been like star of screen and everything from like eat kids. The time, the time, I don't. I literally <laughs> do not want to hear your stupid cunting conspiracies really? about Tom, Tom fucking Hanks. Hanks eats oh, children. for the love of God! Why would he do that, Josh? Do you want to- <laughs> Josh, do you want to do a podcast, mate? <laughs> Can I come to London with you? I'll bring does, my half of the couch. He does. He oh. took a picture of the pavement and put it on Instagram, and that's a sign to the nonce community that he wants a new kid sent into Greece. He's a fucking dum dum. <laughs> These guys are fucking dum dums. Um, um, yeah, Tom. I think someone like Tom Hanks, Denzel, like Julia if you met Roberts. if you met Brad Pitt, Notting Hill, one of my favorite films. If you met Brad Pitt, you'll be like, "All right, Brad, how you doing, mate? All right." 
Yeah, I no. think it would make you be like, don't be a dick. That's why I. That's why I freak out. Not that I'm like, oh my god, they're so famous. In my head, I'm like, don't say something stupid. Don't say something stupid. Don't say so that in my dreams, I don't wake up going, oh god, I can't believe I said that in front of fucking Brad Pitt. I I don't have that. I just cry in front of them. If right. it was someone, I'm like, but but again, I'd be more. Saran Jones to me is more impressive than Brad Pitt. I think she's one of the best actors we've got. Do you know what I mean? Right. So you're, you're and she went my, she like went my college. Jones. That's why. How how would you be with Jurgen? I I think I'd be fine. Bit excited though. Yeah, I'd be like fucking hell, Jurgen. Like that. You're so normal, isn't he though? Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. really He's not normal. Hollywood, is he? Like Mourinho's more Hollywood. Who's yeah. Jurgen? Jurgen Klopp is the the manager of Liverpool Football Club. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. it seems sort of feasible for that to happen. Denzel Washington seems so unfeasible. Do you know what I mean? Well, when yeah. you were in the Albert Hall, when Adam did the Bill Bear, um, warm, uh, not warm-up. Yeah. Support. Support, 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 sorry. Yeah. Ryan Reynolds was watching. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds has seen me do stand-up. We could see him up the top, which and is fucking insane. someone from Arrested Van Wilder was in. Nike. Yeah. yeah, I love that film. You've done stand-up in front of Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. I don't know. You. so good. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, I'm not sure you're getting involved in comedy for the right reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Off the curb, like, where do you see yourself uh, performing for Saran how, Jones? And <laughs> how would you react if you were on stage at, like, The Frog and you just, like, you look like you're two minutes in, three minutes in, two seconds, you're smashing it, you're just ripping, and you just glance over and on, like, a, a hen do. Saran Jones. Saran Jones. Oh, Frog, obviously, being from Manchester, is such a good club. I won't give a shit about the rest of the 17 minutes on stage. I'd be like, Saran! <laughs> I'd, I'd be like, fuck this gig. Fuck all you who paid your money. I'm sitting with Saran Joe. And then I'll get there, and then I'll just cry and ruin a night. Ryan Reynolds has just bought shares in Wrexham. Yeah, he's now a yeah, right. If holder. they're coming to visit Wrexham, they're not staying in Wrexham. Which town that's very picturesque and has got some lovely hotels and Americans love is 20 minutes up the road? Chester. <laughs> Chester's right there. Oh, yeah. Liverpool, Manchester, only an hour, hour and a bit from Wrexham. I reckon there is a chance Possible, yeah. Ryan Reynolds might be knocking about at Alexander's. I don't we'll get Ryan Reynolds on the pod. That'd be we'll good, wouldn't it? Yeah. Get Van Wilder on. Yeah. Can you get Did you Saran want off a dog? Did what? you really Can want you off get a dog? Saran on? Well, we're working on getting Michael Lavelle on. You know, uh, Kevin Webster. Okay, yeah. that'd be good. So I, I do a pretty good Kevin Webster impression. You know? I've heard it. Yeah, so... Um, We've all heard it. Yeah, no. Um, oh, God. Yeah. Do you know, if if ever he comes up with a Kevin Webster-based conspiracy, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just dropping them. I'm going to un-fucking screw the mic and drop it and walk. Did it Maybe Did he it is Kevin Webster. <laughs> That's the conspiracy. Look at my dad. Kevin Webster, never been in the same room. Imagine Ryan Reynolds coming on and you being like, hey! <laughs> uh, get, getting his fucking videos up on did, YouTube. No, it is good. Listen, Ryan. Did you see Ryan in the audience? Was he uh, laughing? I saw him. He, he's seeing him in one of the like did, VIP did boxes. Did he look like it? Is he, did he understand anything? Oh, I couldn't Out hear that. his in a monologue when he was <laughs> No, but I mean, did he? he was... Ryan Reynolds going... <laughs> yeah. But he's very expressive as an actor. Oh, was he laughing? Yeah. Oh, it was quite dark. But I saw I saw him like in the doorway talking to someone. Like God knows who. He's talking. And I texted him. Set. I don't know if you already knew. Yeah, I think you already I think knew. Did, yeah. Carl, <laughs> Carl's Carl's best mate is doing the biggest gig of his career so far, and Carl's watching Ryan Reynolds <laughs> watch his best mate. I, I went. I paid good money to watch a drag queen American one that I'm obsessed with. When I was dead excited for ages, but. Kate Beckinsale was in the audience, so I watched Kate Beckinsale watch the show instead of watching it. Yeah, but yeah, she yeah. was it was stunning. Like I've never seen. When someone you go look, and see a drag queen, yeah, what do they do? Well, loads of them do different stuff. Some of them do comedy. This one was more. Well, she was hosting um, Porn Idol, which is a big show. Where it's like a strip show, and she was hosting it. But she, she's, I don't know. She does like dancing and splits and stuff. She's good. But loads of them do different shit. Yeah. There's like Yeah. It's comedy, singing yeah. is a big thing, isn't it? Yeah. But What's what we'll I can't lips. think of another thing with it. Drag queens do we'll like lips, they'll do your tax return. Lip sync and stuff. Right. But, so the lip sync to songs. But it's good. But I, I, my favourite ones do comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boss? 
Have we got any other questions? Yeah, uh, this is from Sean Taylor. Uh, you have five minutes to hide a paperclip anywhere in your house. A detective then comes in and has 24 hours to find it. If he doesn't get it, you get 50 grand. Where are you hiding the paperclip? That's a fucking unbelievably good question. Is that our Sharni? Mm. That's Sharni, yeah. Big oh, Sharni, yeah. Fucking Hall of Fame Sharni. Um, can I put it up my ass? No, it needs to be in your house. Finn, just done the same the thing. Time. Did you say the same thing? Well, I'm guessing the detective will think it's up your ass. I don't think detectives can just go, right, bend <laughs> over. <laughs> We've got a warrant <laughs> for what? Your ass. Oh. Let's say it can't be on your person, otherwise you'd just swallow it, wouldn't you? Can I put it in his pocket? Oh, you are clever. Yeah, but how are you doing that? What do you mean? <laughs> As he comes in, just go, let me pat you down. Lad. Make sure you're not wearing a wire. <laughs> you're going to pat him down. I've got a warrant. <laughs> he's not going to go in his pocket to like find his phone or chew. He's not over the 20 oh, That's not my paper clip, that's yours. <laughs> you can't hide it in up your ass or in the detective's pocket. You have I'd to hide put it, it in a piece of fruit in the fridge. Okay. Oh God, you don't want to forget that, that. That's there. I don't eat fruit. <laughs> he hasn't got fruit in his fridge. That'd be the weirdest thing. I don't even think you keep a lot of fruit in the fridge. I keep all your fruit in the fridge. I do yeah. anyway. I um, I've got a fruit ball, Maverick. I tie it to a piece of string, then flush it down the toilet. Right, and then tie the, tie the string to the other side of the um, yeah. other side of the toilet. Too. And if he checked the toilet and said, "Why is there a piece of string going round the U?" No, it's not toilet? string. It's like thin wire. That you oh, thin wire. <laughs> Oh, about you then, Josh, up my ass. Can, can you open up the paper? You can do whatever, don't you? Yeah. So I'd open it up and stick it in between the ridges of a toilet roll. Stick it in a bug roll. Oh, I feel like you can oh. find that. Oh, it... Right. You're not going to beat Adam's <laughs> up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> find me a better place than up my ass. In his pocket, apparently. <laughs> not my pocket. His, no, his. Yeah. Well, in a banana. As well, if the police, this is for different, for murder. If I did murder someone, my stepdad's got like OCD, so the no detective team will find shit like once he's finished cleaning it. Right, real OCD. We were talking about this in the first section. No, There's like, been a lot of beautiful symmetry. Yeah. So like very, very nicely done. Has no, he got proper OCD? Yeah, like proper clean. Everything's got to be ridiculous. Diagnosed by a doctor. No, he won't go, but we know. Right. Like, because like... When what you about wash, how clean the doctor's surgery is? When you, when you wash your hands, you've got to like spray the sink out and dry it out. When you have a bath, you've got you have baths instead of showers because of condensation. It's like right, it's well, proper. I can't remember the last time I cleaned the sink. I there is a fine line, isn't there? Where because I love it having a tidy house. I love it, but living with someone with OCD, I shared a house with Barry. And it was hard work. See, I've it was got just like everything just disappeared or got fucking thrown out or put in it. And it just, it looked like we just moved in every day for the two me, years we lived my there. My mum's house is like a show house, but I've got used to it now. I kind of like it. I can't stand mess now. I've kind of gone a bit Oh, I've way. lived with some grubby motherfuckers. Yeah. I'd hide it in the, <laughs> I'd hide it in the keyhole on the front door because if he's not leaving for 24 hours, you wouldn't look. <laughs> Yeah. There was a weird pause there, weren't there? <laughs> there was a weird pause. Yeah. There was a weird pause. Have we got a We could edit out, but we're not going to. New. No. Uh, Get all the real shit. Just for, me, Adam, just for you and me, that, Adam. Just for you and me. We've got to have a word, but it's I, I pulled one up, but then we talked about uh, your ex. Yeah. But I actually think you... This is quite good because... Uh, because you're quite good with your exes. Maybe you could give some good advice. Well, Should we do this? One. Yeah, go on. Oh, yeah. Press the button. What happened with that guy? Uh, oh, God, yeah. I, I, I don't know if I can say it. It's it's right. it makes me look like a bad person. Everything does. You're all fucked. Yeah, yeah. uh, we, you're on a now podcast with know. us two. <laughs> I shat on his dick for revenge. <laughs> Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Josh, when can you come back on this podcast? <laughs> I am not joking. You have been one of my favourite guests for oh, a while. Thanks, mate. You yeah. have been through. This is what we've been doing this a while. We worked out. We were, did did uh, Harry Robinson I the goal? This is one four nine. This is one four nine. It's one fifty. Sorry, we're doing the Patreon. All you want is someone that can talk and who is funny. But what we know is sometimes it's just about throwing some stuff out there. That's all it is. 
And then one of you runs with it, or you don't, or you throw something else out. You have been an absolute throwing machine. <laughs> it's been like watching a fucking Hall of Fame podcast. You've just come on like, yeah, chop my finger off, wrapped it, I've shot on a dick, I worked in a chippy illegally. There's balls sailing over the... Oh, mate. You shot on his dick for revenge. Does that not happen a lot anyway? No. See, this is why it stresses me out when straight people talk about anal because you don't know what you're doing and you've got no business being there. Like, <laughs> I... Because it, it pisses me off. Looking for paper yeah. clips. <laughs> uh, no, when I... See, this is why I got away with it because if I would get any anally penetrated, I douche everything. It's like fucking... Do you remember Kim and Aga? Like yeah. they've been now cleaning me. I douched me bum hole. Get your steps out. Spray on it. Have you ever douched your bum hole? Yeah, yeah, I have as well. Why? Because I was getting a finger up there. What? What? Oh, like, like medically? It, no. Isn't a finger more of a, a like sexy it, little poke while I was getting a blowy? Hang on, love. Put your finger away. So I'll you give you the it. nail clippers. Yeah. Give me the douche. She didn't want to get poo on her finger. I think that's fair enough. Sexy. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Clip that. I'll just go in the bathroom. Get, I'll get the water high. I'll get low. Yeah. No, I, I see. This is why, like, I would never go near a straight guy because, like, I I can't go near an asshole if it's not been douched. Like, I'm sorry, I'm just if not a bush took a trial. Like, I want. <laughs> it's a good rule like, for life, though. Don't go near an arsehole unless it's been douched. No, yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> what, oh. what, what Steve Shantyoski's lying about it? Like, like, be playing a fucking game of kaplunk. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute nightmare. So you need it all prepped. Yeah. Right. So go on. But that's what? what porn stars do, isn't it? So porn yeah. stars, they don't eat for like mm. 12 hours before. They douche. It's all clean. I take supplements, fibre supplements. So like... Um, Firm it up. So everything's together. Quick access out. It's done. That's a bit disgusting, but true. But this Just time, true. you didn't douche. No. So, right. Can I give a backstory? Because I look like a dickhead if I don't. Right, I um... can, can I just say this isn't the have a word, and we might not be doing the have a word because <laughs> you know you just got this feeling that this might be headline in the pod. <laughs> so, basically, I was seeing this guy for ages on and off, and he he wasn't treating me very well, Adam. He was a bit mean, actually. Well, yeah. he wasn't mean, but he he was a dick. Anyway. He was more, I was well more into him than he was me, and I think he knew it. And he was just always in and out of my life. And I thought, I've had enough of this. I need to get him out of my life proper. So one day he said, oh, I'm back in Manchester. Can I stay at yours? And I was like, yeah. So I spent the day, oh, this is all, I feel sweaty talking about it. I spent the day like drinking cans of Fosters and stuff. <laughs> and, and then. And what? Drinking cans of Fosters and loads of like horrible food. And then what did you eat? Um, I I had like chips, just loads of like carbs and like. But I had a good few cans of Fosters, and then why, why is Fosters like well, every just lager, gay man knows? Just lager. <laughs> but um, so basically, then he came round. We were naked, and he was like, "Have you douched?" And I said, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> and um, and then he started, and yeah, I shot on his dick for the revenge. Was it a big runny one? Um, it was like a pebble dash. It was. Oh awful. god, I'm so sorry, but I, I'm not sorry. I, I, um, <laughs> I um, yeah, and do you know what? I could. I just wanted to scar him. Do you like yeah. mentally? And I think I did. But I, um, it was awful because he was like. Obviously, like, what the fuck is going on? And I had to pretend that it was an accident. So I was like, oh, sorry. <laughs> Do you know like, what the funniest bit is? Is the idea that several hours before, you're, like, angrily eating a chicken tikka boon. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you just text him and say, don't come round? That's more of a... Cause that, it isn't, worse. That's no, more I of would... a sign that you want to be with him. No, that and was shit all over him. Yeah, but he wants to scar him. He said, yeah. "Just going, please don't come round." He I don't did... think he's getting up. Ah, well, he'll be fucking devastated for life. There, shitting all he over didn't someone. Didn't treat me very well, oh. and I just thought, do you know what? I'm gonna shit on your dick. I'm gonna shit on your dick, and I did. It's... I bombed a woman once, and she shit the bed. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Press the button. <laughs> Turn it off. Thanks for listening. Is this the lockdown locking already? <laughs> did, did she know she was gonna get bummed? Um. Did she, Adam? Let's hope she did. <laughs> because that's a hot button topic recently. She asked. 
She was like, fuck me in the ass. So was she prepared? F- well, she obviously wasn't prepared for it. No, she did. Can I ask, love, have you had any fosters recently? <laughs> yeah. She, 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 we were getting into it, and she said, I want you to fuck me in the ass. So I did. And then she pooed the bed. <laughs> after we'd finished. Jordan, no, after. Oh, at least I did it on purpose. Yeah. Maybe she did. Yeah, maybe you know? she Fucking weird. Dirty protest. Stand. Was it the Mother Teresa? <laughs> <laughs> Would you shag Mother Teresa? If she was still alive. No, she's too much of a hero to you. I'd Has fu- she ever been goosed? I'd fuck Barry Chuckle. Mother Teresa. Did she was she celibate? Or is she I'm gonna Google that. Oh, it's a conspiracy that. What what does goosed mean? Shagged. I've never heard that. Was I think she... it's like a scousism. Oh right. Is it? Do you know what goosed means? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I think goose means knackered. She was, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's absolutely goosed. Yeah. She was celibate. She was celibate. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, she got fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got a really good Google. Uh, <laughs> Did Mother Teresa get goosed? Scouse Google, lad. She fucking loved it. <laughs> she shot everywhere. But she'd been drinking Heineken. Yeah, but imagine getting to be the only person. Like, like Mother Teresa comes up and going, hey, just letting you know. Me and her did it, you know. The Have a Word podcast <laughs> is out every Monday. If you'd like it earlier, you can sign up on Patreon, patreon.com slash have a word pod. You'll also get a Patreon exclusive where we talk about Mother Teresa and Barry Chuckle <laughs> and such nonsense. Josh, honestly, this has been a, a been terrific. One of the best ones for a while, yeah. haven't I? And Thank we you. love a quality repeat. We will have you back. Yeah. Before you get your, you know, get down to London and leave us in the north. Or if he moves to London before we get him back, we get you back and you can tell us tales of what it's like. Oh, down the there. posh London dick. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's posh. A great career move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting getting out of Houston. I'm here. <laughs> no, I'm going for the career, but I'm also going for the posh London dick. Yeah. You know, London's got more poverty than any other city in the UK. I know, so. but I'll just ignore that dick and go <laughs> straight for the posture. <laughs> it's also got more wealth than any other city. You just got to take a left, not a right. Yeah. Yeah. The wealthiest have city fun, in the mate. world, eh? Pav dick. Must have some good dick. It's got some rich dick. Oh, Foster. yeah, it has. No Fosters. All right. No Fosters. Thanks for listening, everyone. It's been an absolute pleasure. Adamski, do you want to close it out or am I closing it out? Josh, you going to plug yourself? Oh, yeah. Come on. Give us your at. Oh, I don't know. I have to tap on my head. Can I look at my phone? We'll yeah. just find it. Go yeah. for it. Uh, lockdown lock in. Uh, tell a friend. Sign up. Get involved. It is released on Friday, the 22nd of January at 6 pm. We yeah. put it out at 6 pm. I'm already regretting saying we'll do one, you know. I'm, I don't want to yeah. die. I'm scared. I don't want to die. Why are drinking? Uh, um, Johnny Bongo's bringing us book fast and some. Oh, uh, we can do P- book or whatever. Or it's no. Yeah. No, I You've just. You've got to do it properly. I, can't get Johnny Bongo in and then be like, I'm on the Shandies. Don't uh, be a fucking pussy. I can. And I can get called a pussy all day. I don't want to lose a kidney. I want to gain some Patreons. Patreon.com slash have a word part. It's released on Friday the 22nd. There Genuinely, is- the most fun we ever have as a podcast is on the lockdown lock-ins. It's so fun getting bevied up. There's nothing else to do. Get drunk along with us. There'll also be the uh, lockdown lock-in bingo. We'll uh, retweet that. So every time we say some stupid nonsense, you can drink. Josh, where can we find you doing your wonderful thing? Right, so I've just had a look what I'm called. It's Joshy Jones 92 on Instagram. And then, and then I'm on TikTok's Josh Jones Comedy. And I have a podcast, Dead Drama, where I slag off dead people. Wow. There we go. <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure. See you again. Bye, Bye. Teresa. <laughs> Bye, Teresa. <laughs> <laughs>